biz mm. biz cash up in here. I'm actually gonna move this. Give me one second, everyone out there. Where you, you're in Virginia, you said, right? I am indeed, yeah. Okay, cool. You're not too far from me. I'm in uh I'm in uh North Carolina, so I'm just down the street. Oh. Yeah. We literally were in North Carolina like two weeks ago. We're, oh really? We were, uh, Car- at the beach uh just carolina yeah. beach yeah 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 it's great right mm. the bad one Gorgeous. the one you want to stay away from though is uh myrtle beach which is down in south mm-hmm. carolina it's it's rough uh yeah, it's super it's super rough so all right well i think we're it's looking like our bit rates looking good i totally didn't do the thing that dave the noob recommended and try to <laughs> and, try, and, try, and try to check my bit rates or anything so if you are ready are you ready to start recording yeah. all right great yeah, so sure. i'll give you uh it'll be in three two and then yeah exactly okay and here we go oh okay uh, this is going to be a mess here. Well, I just switched <laughs> to the straight water. <coughs> <laughs> no, no, it's pure vodka. No, it's, yeah, my straight, ran out of coffee. <laughs> straight down the hatches. Well, okay. So, uh, how, oh, hey, hold on. Let me get my notes here. I don't, so Mr. Combo usually hosts this. Uh, hey guys, welcome to episode 155 of CMD Towers Brews and Builds. Obviously you can tell that, uh, there's a little bit of a different noise up front here. I am Big Tuck. Uh, And Mr. Combo, unfortunately, is still on his deathbed, which is partially my fault because I really, really kind (laughs) of grinded him out at his uh, bachelor party. So that probably wasn't the best thing to do. But, you know, he's as as we all know, he's a real trooper um, and, you know, he's got the pneumonias, uh, but he's doing fine. So it's been on me to bring out, you know, some of the best of the best out there, some great guests. And uh, me and our current guest are, you know, a little, we're, uh, you know, newer acquaintances, but he came out yeah, and really yeah. blew the doors off on uh, the stream that we had on earlier this week. So I asked <laughs> him if he could be day. a second last minute, last minute uh, <laughs> guest. And we brought him, we have first time on the podcast, second timer on the content creation channel, if you will, but first in our hearts, we got the Castian Blake. How are you doing today, my friend? Hey, man. Yeah, I'm doing good. Thank you for having me on. Uh, so the funny part is, I know you were drinking coffee. Uh, I'm currently drinking this plant-based double IPA from Commonwealth Ooh. Brewing. But um, before we kind of get into a little bit more of, of your backstory, which which is we were talking pre-cast, and I was like, we should stop because this is this is great A content. <laughs> um, so you were drinking coffee earlier, and the funniest part was when we first started this podcast – uh, three years ago, this is our fourth season now. Uh, Mr. Combo came up with some ideas and he was like, you know, let's do something different, right? Like we're brewing decks, you know, we could brew something. And his first thought was like, why don't we talk about like, why don't we make it like we're brewing coffee? And I was like, okay, that's fine. But the problem is you don't drink coffee. And at the time he didn't. <laughs> so I was like, okay, so I don't really know anything about brewing coffee, so, but I do know about brewing beer. He still doesn't really drink beer, but I do uh, quite a bit, as you can see here. So that was the thing with the, that was the deal with the coffee. So you're like, you're still, you know, it's still adjacent. It's still good. Keeping the spirit alive. Keeping yeah, the spirit ex- alive. exactly. So, um, you know, before we get into what we do here at Brews and Bills, for those who don't know, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, um, you know, shout out your plug, shout out everything else. I got your, your link tree ready to post to the group. And then why don't you tell us how you kind of got into playing Commander? Because I know people come, you know, into it from all over the place. Yeah, sure. Um, well, yeah. Hi. Uh, um, my name's uh, Kenny or the Cassian Blake, or Cassian Blake all over the internet. Um, I am a content creator, streamer in the nerdverse. I do a lot of, like, I'm a variety streamer on Twitch, so I play a lot of video games. Um, and that's at twitch.tv slash Cassian Blake. Uh, and I stream D&D twice a week currently. That's going to go up to three times a week in a couple of months. Very fitting um, for today's topic. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> um, uh, but I'm actually getting to play. I'm usually a DM. I've been like a forever DM for a long time. So I'm oh, really? To play these I... uh, games on stream, which I'm very excited about. 
Oh, okay. So you're a player now. Yeah, I mean, I'm still running games for like my okay. friends and and privately, but like I'm, I'm getting to to be a player on things, yeah. which is uh, you know. Um, How do you like? Uh, have you I, do you feel like it's just as it's just as fun, just as rewarding? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. Like, I mean, just as rewarding, no, because there is no better feeling in D and D than being a dungeon master, setting up like an encounter or something. Yeah. Particularly when you pull it out of your backside at the last minute because they've got sure. a place you weren't <laughs> expecting them to. Uh, and then, and then, like at the end of the session, people being like, "That was amazing! That was such a good session." We did that, and it's like, yeah, I created something that you guys enjoy. We created something that you guys enjoyed right. because it's always a collaborative thing. But um, yeah, so I like being a player because it means I get to let the 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 actor side of me out. Because okay, it's yeah, I've been professionally for the last ten, eleven, twelve years. Um, wow. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> but then, um, but the DM, I get to let the storyteller side of me out, which is yeah. it's like they're they're linked, but they're not the same. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, so uh, I do that, and then I stream with and am part of uh, a magic content creation group called the Magic Tapping Authority out of New York. Uh, I'm not in New York. I'm I'm in Virginia, but it's like that. It, it's becoming it's kind of becoming like inter, like glo- it's like global right it's like mr well, worldwide we, absolutely we are mr worldwide no we because we, we, <laughs> we've got people from israel we've got people from oh wow uh from the uk we've got people from australia we've got we've got people like all over the place um now playing the games and right and coming and hanging out um and i'm kind of with regards to the content creation for them uh, I'm referring to myself as the magic tapping historian because oh. I'm, the one that's, I'm coming up with uh, like law videos and videos about the laws behind Commander, behind rep planes, and, and that's right. things like that. Um, so, yeah, that's a like uh, also a voice actor these days because I've uh, because I'm hopping across. I, I, I I'm you still you're 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 there. Welsh originally, right? Well, I'm. Uh, so, so <laughs> okay i was like because i know you said you're like it's between here and wales and i was like okay yeah. that makes sense right like so, my geography is such as a dumb american that i've i've actually been to wales before but like i know where it is anyway well originally from the southeast of england okay uh, gotcha my whole life uh but then my parents moved away to wales um at the t- same time i had to give up because I wasn't, I wasn't living with my parents at the time. I was living in my own flat. I had to oh, give up yeah. my flat when I went to, away to work on the ships. Uh, and so when I come back to the UK, I now live with my parents in Wales, which is okay. always fun when you're 30 years old. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I also, I also lived with my parents when I was 30, and it was horrible. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like I live in a room. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Like, right. Like my joke now is when I. Airport, like, well, it's not, and like my joke now is when I go home, I usually am working remote, right? So I'll be, yeah. my boss will be like, listen, I know you're at home. We don't want to overburden you. It's like, no, please. Like every, every task you give me is another four <laughs> hours. I can just spend in a room by myself and actually have an yeah, excuse for it, you know, me. but the, the cruise, you exactly. got, the, the cruise that you were talking about, that's how you actually kind of got into magic as well as like you're telling me on the pre-pod, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I, I was working for a cruise company, uh, doing, doing a, a, as a performer, as an entertainer, singer, um, and, and, and performer um in one of their shows and in the most recent contract <clears throat> which uh finished in february i'm going to say oh, wow. um i was uh working alongside a friend who was in a different show but we got talking and he wanted to play the D&D game that i was running we got chatting and he also played magic um and he was like yo you guys like D&D you like this kind of nerdy stuff um, do you, have you played Magic the Gathering? I was like, I used to try and play like standard back in the day when I was yeah. younger, but I could never really get into it. He was like, well, this is format called Commander you might like. And he yeah. had like four Commander decks with him. So me and two of the other guys that I was working with, we kind of all, the four of us got together and we were playing with his decks. And I, I fell back in love with Magic. Yeah. I fell back in love with, I fell completely in love with the format. And because we were... Um, understandably, in the last contract, there were a lot of restrictions on sure. crew because obviously we've just we're still kind of in the middle of a of a pandemic, um, and so we couldn't leave the ship often. So we were just sat around with not a lot to do, 
Yeah, right. And so I built three decks while I was on the <laughs> ship. That's um, incredible. Uh, the first two were, were pre-cons. I, I yeah. built out Lathril, uh, Blade of Elves. Which is which funny because you need about, like, what, $10 to make that into... <laughs> out the box. It's a, and I, I have think... actually spent a decent chunk on it now, but, like, okay. that's only because there were cards that I was like... Oh, but I really like yes, that card. Right. I really I think, like that card. I, th I think on it. So I've been. I started the first. The first uh, pre cons I started on, I think were Commander twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen. So mm. it's mm. been. I've been. You know, I, I'm not as as long as some of the people I know and other content creators. But all that being said, I think Lathril out of the box is maybe like we we had to. It's so strong. The we do like budget challenges here, and sure. one of them was like. We did a pre-con with a $10 budget upgrade, right? And we were sure. like, no, you cannot use Lathril. It's too strong. That's like, we ba we banned it. <laughs> I, but that's that's fair. I would say I would say in the last, like, year, Lathril and Prosper. Are, Prosper is also yeah. – I, I Prosper is also one of my favorite decks. It's so good. Yeah. You just you just pick it up out of the box. I mean, we, I, I, we were playing on – off stream uh, uh like uh, how dare you ago. you can't listen you, i thought i thought you were a content creator it all has to be monetized <laughs> it all has to be streamed we can't do it for fun anymore <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but, yeah but we were playing i was playing like a, a deck that i built from scratch and so sure. other people and someone was like i'll play my prosper pre-con i haven't yet managed to upgrade it yet they brought it out and they trounced us with oh it's br <laughs> it's like, brutal it's just it's the only thing, the only, my only thing with Prosper, um, and then we'll get into, uh, we'll get, we'll get into the episode is like, mm. it, it, it's like what we were just talking about precast too, right? I kind of feel like it's kind of like this value train, right? Where you're like, you yeah. see, you get all this value out of it, but like where I struggle in that is like finding those, those yeast cards, if you will, um, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to kind of close it out without doing it like, you know, any sort of infinite combo shenanigans, that sort of thing. But Anyways, we're. I, I'm glad you picked up this. I'm. Well, I don't know. I always say I'm kind of glad because I know it's a huge time and money sink once you get into <laughs> Commander. To, I'm going to show you just very briefly. Yes, please. This, this is now my. Oh my god. <laughs> what do you want? This, this is my nerd. What, shelf. what are you? What are you up to? What is that? Twenty ish. Uh, one, two, three. I think I'm up to like nineteen at this point. Wow! In, in a year, that's impressive. That is very impressive. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I think I think Mr. Combo's me and Mr. Combo are both in like the 40s and 50s, I think. But we've been playing for mm -hmm. six years and I think so. I love it. And okay. um, if you guys if you guys want to see one of his decks uh, in action, you can check the video on demand. I think it's published. I really haven't had the time to look into Twitch of uh, our, fun our game, dude. That was a blast, right? So um, we're also talking <laughs> about. Wait, we'll talk about that later. So. Uh, <laughs> on, on with the episode. So Bruise and Builds is our deck tech series since we conquered the path to 32. The 12 themes of EDH decks. Uh, season 3 brought a lot of flavor. And now for Season 4, we are back to one of our old school episodes. Uh, just our straight up and Bruise and Builds. So Bruise and Builds is our podcast series. And what we do is we try to break decks down in imaginative ways. So uh, for those who are aware of, we break them down the same way that you'd break down a beer. So uh, we don't have the sound effects loaded because, again, uh, Mr. Combo is out for the count. But the first thing we do is we talk about how do you establish your board, ramp, and usually draw some cards. We call that the grains. So grains are the foundation of every beer. They include both base malts and specialty malts, usually about a 60 to 40 ratio. This helps with the color, the taste, and most importantly, the alcohol content of a beer. Decks always need ways to grow, stabilize, and ramp into your bigger threats. And just like a grain profile, they're usually a mix of stapleties and specialty cards. Then we also have ways to interact with our opponents and also to keep our opponents from interacting with us. And we correlate that to a hop profile. And hops, for those who don't know, give the beer its patented bitterness and herbal floral flavors. They grow a variety of strands and help distinguish subcategories like this double IPA, uh, plant-based, as mentioned previously. Our hop choices help clear, interact with the board so your deck can ultimately do what it wants. Finally... Decks have to win in some way, shape, or form. So we categorize these as yeast cards. Oh, wait. Uh, no, this is... 
like it's a <laughs> bubbling. Yeasts are living microorganisms that eat the sugar from the grain and poop out alcohol and CO2. It adds alcohol content and the carbonation. Without yeast, you'd be drinking flat sugar water. And without yeast cards, your deck wouldn't meet the goal of actually winning the game. And then finally, we have fun cards, shenanigans, pet cards, these sort of things that you really like but maybe don't fit the whole theme of the deck. And we mm-hmm. call those spices. And not every beer has them, but spices and other additives help separate a normal stock beer from a specialty one. It could be the pepper that turns a stout into jalapeno stout. Uh, Kenny, just behind the scenes, jalapeno stouts are probably my least favorite beer. And literally, I've been oh. saying this for three years and r- just keep forgetting to change the template. Um, or the addition of hops <laughs> that turn, or the addition of hops that turn an IPA into a double IPA like the one I'm drinking already. Not every deck has something that makes it pop, but if it does, this is where we generally talk about it. Then we have the bottle capping. Uh, normally, this is where me and Mr. Combo will choose three cards and make three cuts, one under $5, one under $50 to $100, and then finally one no-budget option. But as we just learned, uh, Kenny just built this deck, I believe, earlier this week. So we decided uh, yeah, yeah. that you probably haven't got the amount of reps that you need in it. So we just decided I'd choose three cards to cut. Um, so without further ado, let's get brewing. So Kenny was kind enough to go through and go through our completely arbitrary, nonsensical categorization, uh, using hey, Moxfield. Say, yes, please. As I said to you uh, on, on the, 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 um, pre-pod, <laughs> like legitimately this, though it seems arbitrary and silly and it's like for the, for the, for the, sure. the, the style of the podcast, honestly, separating these cards into these like four <laughs> categories is super straightforward and just really it, simplifies it, it really helps it really helps right like yeah, yeah, yeah. um i i, I we we were long time tapped out stands um mm-hmm. so we we did all there was there the, that tagging in there was very archaic so um, I've since moved to Moxfield and I see some of these decks that people oh. post and it's like, they must've taken two hours to get this thing squared away. Uh, yeah. but yeah, it, it is, it does actually like, I agree with you. It does kind of make it a little simpler. Uh, but we have, uh, we have a deck that is very perfectly aligned to what we were talking about. Um, people who listen to the podcast know that I used to play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. I've also played a lot of Baldur's Gate. So I've had some qualms with these sets that they have released, uh, which I pretty much mm-hmm. since kiboshed and tried to be more positive. But we have Castian Blakes, the Castian Blake, excuse me, a peek behind the screen, a Bant Dungeons deck led by Cholane Teller of Tales. So for those who don't know, Cholane Teller of Tales is a busted card. Uh, and I think this deck is a great <laughs> example as to why he's so busted. Uh, he is a legendary creature, human druid. That's a mythic rare. That's a two, four selling. The foil is selling for about $11. I think yeah. it's, I mean, yeah, which yeah. is crazy for a pre-con, right? <clears throat> but also you probably don't know this, but, uh, Thrones of Eldraine, we predicted was going to be a trash set. We were completely wrong. It is very, <laughs> it is very strong. So it's kind of our redacted it's set. It's my favorite cards. Yeah. Honestly. It's, it's really strong. So, um, it's got it. Like I said, it's a two, four with vigilance. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card, then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Seems pretty good. And then all, if that's not enough punishment, <laughs> then you also have three colorless and tap. Uh, return target creature you control to its owner's hand. So, um, Kenny, what made you... What What's the theme of the deck? What made you want to build it? Um, did, if you've had a chance to play it, how does it play? Like, how we've... How, what's the kind of background of the deck here? So... Um... I chose Tulane uh, because I, so I haven't I have two Tulane decks. Yes. Um, I I chose Tulane because it's called. I literally looked at the name and saw Tulane, the Teller of Tales, because I've been looking at adventure cards initially, yeah, initially sure. in the other deck and going like, there's all these adventure cards, but no one plays them. Like how who would play them? And I was like, he's a Teller of Tales. They look like storybooks. Let's do oh, that. Oh yeah yeah yeah. But then I thought to myself. I want to build a dungeon deck because yes. I play D and D. There's all these great, you know, you stumble upon a glade, you all, all these yeah. sorts of cards that again don't see like a ton of play. Um, and I love D and D. I was like, well, he's a teller of tales. He's a dungeon master. He's true playing <laughs> the dungeon master. Yes. And so I was like, I want to take as many legendary creatures from the forgotten, from the Adventures of the Forgotten Realms and Baldur's Gate, uh, Commander Legends. I want to take as many of those. I want to take every single one of the you happen upon, you come yes. across a whatever cards I can. Which I think are all very good, by the way. I think they're all very they're, strong, yeah. I think any any card, any instant or sorcery card that's modal yeah. is instantly a good card because 
I mean, obviously you can get like two trash modes, but like yeah, it's, yeah. most of the time you're going to get at least one of those modes that you're like, oh yeah, no, this is... Yeah, this it's, is like a, it's a blowout, yeah. Um, and so I was like, and I want to throw all those together. I want to run through a bunch of dungeons. And then I also want to cast Eliwick Tumblestrum because I love the art. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. And so I just sort of threw it together and, and yeah. tried to make it work. Have you... And, have you... And, have you gotten to play it yet? Yeah, I played. I actually played it yesterday. Um, oh, excellent! So I took it with me to my LGS um, to because uh, I went down there to, to uh, pick up um, my my pre ordered box of uh, Dominari United. Uh, okay. So I can't. I couldn't get the pre con still today. So I'm going after the pre podcast. I'm going yeah, back yeah. to my LGS to pick up the thing. I could have done both at the same time, but I felt like getting out the house. Um, and so I, I, while I was there, there were people playing Commander. I was like, hey, I've got a new deck that I want to try. Do you guys mind if I join you? And so I sat down with them. And it went like it went really well. I was playing I against, um, I can't remember his name, the Commander from Midnight Hunt, who when he flips back and forwards night and day, he gains uh, counters and then makes spells cheaper. Um, uh, it's, it's the Is It one, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, 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 yeah. I know um, what you're talking about. Yeah. Great card, but I can't remember his name. But um, yeah. and then a Kadama of the West Tree mono green uh, counters and uh, auras, and um, uh, Zeotora. and so like it was a pretty even match. We we had a lot of fun, and it 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 does the things I wanted it, it, it to do. It does the it does the <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, it does the stuff, which is always helpful to learn that you, you there's nothing. <laughs> something more satisfying than going i hope this deck works and yep. then it does and then it actually does yeah <laughs> enough decks where i've gone i hope this deck works and then you sit down and go this is a mess this is just a pile yeah. of cards yeah i i there's a I, I there's a deck i have right now that i'm pretty sure is 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 like that and i don't know how to get out of it but if we look at some stats real quick um so you have sure. 19 you broke it down into about 19 grains um about mm. 20 hops uh, give me one second to scroll down. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, about 12 yeast cards or 12 yeast cards. And then your spice count, I think might be a new record because we have 13 spice. <laughs> so, um, usually with me and Mr. Combo, we usually have about three or four. I think there's a few in here. I think if you, if you come back and guess, I think it, you'll, you might trim this down a little bit, but you know, we love the spice. We'll uh, we don't talk enough about it. The deck I think currently is, is costing about $402, which is more than what I thought, um, at first. And then if we look at the mana breakdown, you did a pretty, we always talk about like the percentages, right? So mm -hmm. if you look at blue, 38 to 40 mm -hmm. uh, percentage to mana production, 31 to 40 for um, the blue, 35 to 40 for green, and then about everything else. Was that intentional or did it just happen to work out that way? I honestly, I, so I build mana bases, um, I build mana bases compulsively now. Like, oh, is, okay. Is a, I I always do. I always do all the castles because I love them. Yes. I do all the interactive channel lands from Kamigawa because they're yes. they're great. They're also great. Yes. And, and then I try and make sure I've got a shock land of each of the colors that I I can. The two the 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 tapped tri land yep. and the triome if it's a three land, uh, and then, and then I just kind of. I have the same utility cards in every single deck, which is Command Beacon, Command Tower, obviously. Obviously. Um, uh, Ghost Quarter, because there's always one. Yes, you always one need... land that you need to get rid of. It could be. I, I can't tell you how many games we've lost to Glacial Glacial Chasm, if you will, as you say in the yep. UK, right? Um, yeah. And uh, I, the the other boogeyman that people talk a lot about is Java. Is um, what is it? Uh, Guy's Cradle. Yeah, which I like. I don't know. I. Uh, I, I, I haven't it, seen anyone play one of those. It's been a, it's been a while, but yeah, there's always one land where you're like, okay, this is either this is either or something that's a blow. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. If you're trying yes. to swing through and someone's got a maze, if you're like, I need to get rid of it. I'm sorry. Yeah, for but sure. I like I like Ghost Quarter because it's not strip mine. I like yeah. Ghost Quarter because you do it and then they get a land to replace right. it. It's a basic land, but then they have got something. So. And I'm sure the fact that it's got a 20 cent price tag compared to, to strip mine, which I'm guessing is 20 or 30 now, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, bucks, it's, yeah. It makes it a little easier um, to factor in. And, and then Reliquary Tower, because I never know if someone's going to make me draw half of my sure. deck and then I need to be able to 
not have to throw all that away. Keep the utilities Rogue's passage because sometimes you just got to swing and scavenger ground because sometimes some graveyard help hate is helpful. I, I I agree, and I think like if you look at like the total amount, a uh, commander beacon is the most expensive. But I think if you're if you're building like a commander lands preset, I think that's probably in total maybe ten bucks. And yeah. it's, a, it's a small price to pay for all of it. The last thing we talk about, and this one's always kind of a sticking point for Mr. Combo because he doesn't like the way Mr. Moxfield do it. The average mana value of your, mana, of your main board is 1.91 with lands and 2.95 without lands. So you're looking at around a CMC uh, 3 if we just take the base stuff, yeah. which I think is, is probably pretty fair in this with the ramp and everything yeah. else. So I think we should just hop into it. So... Um, <laughs> it's 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 your it's 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 your it's your deck. So uh, before we get there, though, uh, we do want to plug. We do have a Patreon. It's patreoncom slash cmd tower. Um, we have tiers from one dollar all the way up to twenty five. One dollar gets you access to some great stuff in our Discord with our moderators, uh, Marketing Ross and SD Sharpie. Uh, it gives you first crack into some of the new products we're working on. You will get products sent to you if you get into certain tiers. Um, and obviously, this helps us support things like the microphone stand that I'm talking into right now and these things. So um, we'd love to help. But if it's a financial burden to you in any way, obviously, don't do it. <laughs> uh, you can always just like, share, and subscribe. So uh, this is your deck. Um, so we'll get into the grain build. What's the first grain card that you want to talk about? Uh, my girl, my babe, uh, Gretchen Titchwiller. She is in. You didn't even oh. wait. Come on, what? You didn't even. You didn't even give me a warm up for oh, that. No, 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 sorry. <laughs> it's, I know it's okay, but I will. I'm gonna force you. Okay, so we we matched on we matched on Gretchen. Uh, yeah. I, I'm there too. <laughs> it, no, 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 it's fine. Uh, so why don't you? Okay, so now you have to read the card in its entirety. We cannot break it up. Um, because of this horrendous faux pas that you that you have chosen. <laughs> um, okay, Gretchen Titchfollow is a uh, legendary creature halfling druid for one green and one blue. Yes. Uh, you can pay two colorless, one green and one blue, to draw a card, and then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Her flavor text says... No, wait, okay, before you get into the flavor text, okay, since you're an actor... Mm-hmm. I think we should. We used to do this thing where we'd spin the wheel and have to do accents. So I'm gonna fire that okay. up, but you have okay. to you have to read this in an accent of your choice. Of my choice. Of your choice for now. We will get the. Um, I'll get the wheel spun up and then we'll spin it. All right. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Northern Irish. And I okay. Excellent. To anyone who's from Northern Ireland. <laughs> <clears throat> Plant what you wish to grow. We wish to see grow. Listen for the stories you want to hear told. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, uh, that's definitely the worst I've ever done. It. <laughs> she's also a zero four, which makes her a D. She, she's got a big butt. Yeah. Um, but I, I think she's great because I mean she does what Tulane does. Right. Uh, for a mana cost, so she's kind of in this deck a second uh, commander. But it's 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 everything you want from grains. It's yes. draw a card, play a land. That's well, the two things and, you want and from think, grains, and we've talked and we've talked about this in our grain builds, or we talked about this in our deck too. Uh, this is th there are some that are just kind of like they're kind of like backup commanders, right? Where it's like mm -hmm. two lane mm -hmm. costs five, which in this build it's not that hard to get to, but cat like it would feel really bad to cast two lane for ten when you could yeah, do yeah. this ability twice, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, just to kind of get the game going with it. That's why I put it in. Another thing, too, is that all of the dungeon builds and, and these sort of things that we played have never had green in them. So uh, I, I really try to choose, and I think that's cool, right? There's a lot of venture cards, um, a lot of really mm -hmm. utility stuff there that we want to get into. So I try to choose cards that we wouldn't really talk about in our normal dungeon builds. So again, I, I, the only, my only, like, I don't even know if it's like, I don't even know if it's an issue or not, but it's like, I think this card fills the same slot that a lot of Simic cards do, right? A lot yeah, of them yeah. are low-costed with some ability that lets you cheat lands into place. That's my only real complaint with it. But again, it, it's flavorful. It's it, The Halfling Druid, totally the subtypes totally match there, which I think they don't a lot of times. But mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyways, great first pick. Um, I'm going to go, or, sorry, did you have anything else? Uh, no, I was just gonna say it. She, 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 uh, she, because I, she, I, I discovered her when I was replacing uh, in my Adrix and Nev, which was the second deck I built. Um, 
I had Zimone Quandrix Prodigy, but she's a little bit more expensive as a card, and okay. she does the similar thing. But when Gretchen came out, she was just Zimone Quandrix Prodigy, but like for two mana, I was like, yeah, give me, ah, please. right. <laughs> I'll take more of that. Also, you're talking about green. I just need to state, I am, uh, as I like to refer in Magic, a basic bitch, and so all of my <laughs> decks, all of my decks uh, have green. I'm currently trying to go through a process of building a tribal and non-tribal in all oh. the green color combinations. And so oh, this okay. is my, I have two non-tribal um, yeah. band decks now with two lane, but like this is, yeah, this is that. This is one up there. Now, it's a it's a great pick. So for my second pick, I know I'm like 90% sure we're going to match on the last one. Um, so okay. I'm going to go with this one because I think this is a really strong budget option. So the one I want to talk to is called, it's an artifact that costs three. And for me, it's it's a budget thought vessel. So mm -hmm. I think decanter of wait, are we matching here? We're not, right? Are we? We, we uh, yeah, we are. You, you gotta say you gotta do something. All right, ready? I'm are sorry, you ready? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I, I I'm failing to understand it, and I apologize. No, no, no. It's okay. So if you so uh if if I'm if we're matched, just be like, uh-huh, yeah, and like give me the thumbs up, right? And then we'll go. Because okay, okay, I, I, I've got you. I've got I you. guarantee the next one's gonna be a match too. So are you ready? Okay. Three, two, one. Decanter of yeah. Endless Water. Oh, Decanter of Endless Water, yes. <laughs> At the same time. So three color, or no, three colorless and an artifact, uh, but which is pretty solid. It's 79 cents. Uh, it's yeah. a uncommon, but what does it do? So it's it's actually, in my opinion, for that one extra mana, it's a, it's a little bit better than Thought Vessel because oh. it's a, you have no maximum hand size, which right. is what Thought Vessel does, but it also taps for one mana of any color rather than tap right color, right which is infinitely better yeah um, for sure because because why would you why would you take a um i'm blanking on all two mana uh rocks at this point but why would you take I mean, a, a, million, different yeah. two, a, a colorless two mana rock when you could take an arcane signet do you know what i mean yeah yeah for sure um i i agree with that and we have this uh there was a that one of our old producers was obsessed with the card manolith right and mm -hmm. he would put it into decks and we're like there's just better options right and this one literally there's no reason why you'd ru we wouldn't run this over manolith um and i like i agree right i think depending on the play group and the ones that i've seen you play with cop cop and stuff the i think yeah. the argument would be like well, if you're playing a fast deck, the one mana matters comparative to like a turn one thought vessel to a turn sure, two sure, this sure. in what we also refer to as magic Christmas land, if you will. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think you bring up a good point, right? Especially in three color decks, especially in four color decks and five color decks, yeah. especially you need as much smoothing as you want, unless you want to pay $400 for the perfect mana base. Oh, so, and because uh, I don't, I, I know a lot of friends and a lot of people do run zero mana mana rocks. Yeah. Um, and that's cool if you've got them, if you pulled them, if you if you yeah. have the money for them, fantastic. I just, like, I have Soul Ring in all my decks because Soul Ring's Of great. course, Soul yes. Lovely. And it's but, it's like, a dollar or two, whatever, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but when you see someone pop down, when you're trying to just have a fun game, like yeah. a casual, an actual casual EDH game, and someone's like, Lotus Blossom, Lotus, sorry, Lotus Petal, uh, uh, Jeweled Lotus, Mana Vault, turn one. You're like, all right, should I? Do, should, is should this I is it? Yeah. What? Well, and it's funny you mentioned that too because my the deck that we were gonna play on Monday, my Boros, like it's, I've had a bunch of different varietals of Boros decks. So over time, mm -hmm. Boros needs is the most mana hungry ones, and sure. that's that deck is so fast. Like literally, I drew two hands and I was like. I don't think this is going to be fun. Like, this is not going to be fun for stream, right? Like, it's way right. too fast, way too explosive. Um, so I, I think mean, that... If everyone's got that deck, if everyone's yes, like, I'm right. bringing out my big guns, cool, love that. My my, my fastest deck is Ognis the Dragon Lash Treasures. I, that deck is so good. Uh, okay, it's really funny you mention that because that was literally the deck that I had on tap to talk about today with Mr. Compo. <laughs> Oh, was it actually <laughs> amazing? Yeah, no, it's just it, it get and it gets there quick because it's treasures and right. like uh, I've got an amulet of vigor in there. You throw that in, the treasures come in. Oh, of course, yep. and that's fine. But like, I like that deck because it's fast, but you have to work for it to be fast. Right, you still got to attack. Like, you still got to get in the red zone. Right, yeah. Yeah, I, I like to challenge. I like I like to challenge my and, and there's no if if you want to run zero mana mana rocks and you're playing that kind of magic. 
there's no shame in the game. Do it sure. and have fun. But like, I like to make things a little bit difficult for myself, and so I like to like, uh, I like to make work for the things that. I, that's why I yeah. have a, I have a thought vessel, uh, in in most of my decks because I do want a maze of if. Right, right, right. Maze of if doesn't tap for. Oh, uh, thematic compass, it, right? Yeah, thematic compass. That's one. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Um. Uh. So thematic compass turns into a maze of it. I want a maze of it. But I want a maze with the taps for mana, right? Uh, if I need it to, and yeah, it's it's like I like to work for the big guns. Do you know Abs- what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think I think there's a lot of people who might be listening to this that might be able to take a page out of that book. Uh, but let's move on to the last pick. So you have already mentioned this one, and um, I'm gonna make this even easier for you because you you technically categorize this in two spots, and I know why. But I think this one is best suited in the grain because it's your only planeswalker that you have in the deck. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. We're matched here, right? We have to be. We are we are 100 okay. matching here. All right, ready? Three, two, one. Ellie Wick Tumblestrom. Yes! This card is so great. All right, so I've done a lot of talking. You gotta read the whole thing. Top to bottom, okay. the price, the rarity, mm-hmm. everything you got. And then I'm gonna crack open uh this karate champ, the uh the artwork's pretty solid here. It's like that old 8-bit stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, take it away. All right. Eliwick Tumblestrom is a mythic rare legendary planeswalker, Eliwick. She costs two generic and two green. To tick up for one, uh, she comes in with four with four loyalty. To tick up for one, you venture into the dungeon, which is what we want to do. It's, so, it's, <laughs> it's really good. It's just so straightforward. But then on two, it becomes a kind of a tutor because you have a look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. If it's legendary, you gain three life Oof. and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And then her ultimate is minus seven. You get an emblem, which doesn't go away. With, <laughs> with cannot the be interacted with. <laughs> cannot be interacted with. Creatures you control have trample and haste. And get plus two, plus two for each differently named dungeon you have completed, which now with the initiative, there are four. Yes. Right. It's it's incredible. I think the, like, we've talked a lot about dungeons and adventurings, um, and you don't know this about me, but I love, so my favorite mechanic ever been printed in, in Commander is Monarch. I think it's incredible. Mm-hmm. I love it. It's I, I, I put a Monarch card in every single deck I run. It's my favorite mechanic <laughs> of all time, right? Followed second now by the Initiative, and then now, which I like a little bit more than Dungeons, followed by Venturing, right? So yep. the, I, I think this card is a slam dunk in here, obviously, right? Being able to clear through Dungeons, you have the ways to do it, right? There's a lot of repeatable effects that you have. We'll get into yep. some of them later. And just the fact that I think this card is innocuous enough because i think a lot of people still have that sort of mentality of oh it's a planeswalker watch out we're all screwed if this even if this lasts two turns right and i think this one is fairly innocuous enough to where people aren't going to be like kill on site dump resources into it right like attack badly it looks like a dungeon venture it looks like you most people are going to look at that as, as people often do most people are going to look straight to that first and second ability. That first ability is just venture into the dungeon, which that venturing is still, in my opinion, from, from, from games I've played, it's still a mechanic that people kind of look at and go, oh, all right. It's, like, cu- no it's, it's cute, right? It's cute. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay, cool. Good for you. You built, a, you built a dungeon deck? Good. But then in four turns time, with you just venturing into the dungeon and yeah. going, do, 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 in four turns time, suddenly... You now have the ability. All your creatures have trample. All your creatures have yeah. haste, and they're gonna get bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger, bigger the more dungeons yeah. you complete. Now, here's my it's, question. It's a great card. We, so we talk a lot in our in our team. We all know what staples are, right? Mm-hmm. Which is like has to like um, yeah, uh, Sylvan Library, right? A green staple. There's it's sure, hard sure. it's hard to not run it if you have a copy of your money, right? But one thing we also yeah. talk about is standards, right? Which are cards that are are very good in their respective color pie, but wouldn't make it into every single deck, but are very strong. Yeah. So here's my argument um, with this card. If this mm-hmm. card said plus, and it kind of goes against the theme of what this this card is trying to do, I think. But if this card said plus one, take the initiative versus venturing, 
and nothing else changed on it, I would argue it's a green, I feel like that would be a green standard. It'd be very hard to put it into decks because the initiative, like the Monarch, is something that kind of repeats over time. Whereas, yeah. like, the Venture is something that you kind of have to play. You kind of have to build around a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, what do you, what, how do you, do you think that'd be too good? Like, what would you think about swapping out the Venture for initiative? I mean, I'd be down with the Venture for initiative. Um, I, I, it is more limiting in terms of, like, because with the initiative, you, unless you're already in a dungeon, you have to go into oh um, the, the, the the undercity the or whatever it's called, right? Yeah, undercity. Yeah, that's it. But but which is fine though, because the undercity is a decent dungeon. Um, but like, so with regards specifically to this deck, it becomes a little bit more limiting. However, in if if you did change it, it then becomes a card that you, if you're not, it, it if you don't put it in like a creatures based deck, you. are you're crazy. Yeah, because right. It's, it's, it's like you get to use it. You get the initiative, which is always, it's just a little right. extra bonus. And then suddenly at the end, you're going to get, you have a an emblem, which right. is, provided you complete the Undercity, you have an emblem, which is uh, Overrun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have Overrun as an emblem. Right. I, I completely agree. And I think the other thing too that I like about Monarch and the initiative is like, it's kind of like, How can I say this? It's like the – if you look at the broad spectrum of drawing a card or going into the Undercity, right, it's pretty mm -hmm. not game-breaking, but I think yeah. people want it, right? So a lot of times when I play my Monarch decks, I'm like – people are like, hey, I'm going to come in and take the Monarch from you. I was like – I'm not even going to try to stop you, right? Because then guess what? Someone else is going to try even harder to take the initiative of the Monarch from them. And then when it gets to your turn, yeah, exactly, right? So it, it forces interaction and not, yes. like, not like interaction like, you know, count spells. Whatever. It forces the interaction of going like, oh, particularly the Monarch because that extra card draw is, oh, it's is huge. sometimes yeah. game changing. Do you know what I mean? Um, I mean, I literally had a uh, yesterday with a different, we played a, a separate game. Um, and that someone pulled out the monarch. I was struggling with card draw, so I was like, "You've done nothing to me, but I am gonna swing yeah. this like just for a taste. I just want to. I just want a taste, right? I just need that draw. I just <laughs> need that card draw, and that's it. Yeah, exactly. It's it's. I like the initiative mechanic. I know. It, I do have friends who like the dungeon mechanic, the venture mechanic, but they they didn't like the initiative because it was like restrictive to you have to do the. Oh, like, sure. But it becomes because it's something that moves around the I just table, don't think and also it, I think I think that's also a borderline like um, I don't know I don't know what I, how you say it but like I feel like that's like a pretty small potatoes argument right where it's like yeah that that one dungeon gets you get you a land um that when you finish it you pretty much like you can almost win the game on the spot depending on what on how yeah, lucky yeah. you get right so anyways yeah. I, I I love it uh that is also very <laughs> It's rare now that we line up all three for three. So let's put grain behind us and go into hops. But before we do that, um, we do have an Etsy store. If you go on Etsy and I think it's etsy.com slash shop slash the MD tower, you can find all the merchandise we have. Um, the, like was just said, the Monarch token, um, the upkeep token that we have there that are printed, uh, our foil play mat, which looks great. It's getting to fall season, so it's about to be sweater, or if I may, jumper season for everyone out there. So we do have a Jun colored uh, sweater that's really nice. So uh, head over there. You know, like I said, all this merchandise we made it for our watchers and our listeners. So head over there and grab that stuff if you want to support the channel. But let's get into the hops. So this one has a lot of different options in here. Um, and for those playing the home game, I did in fact spin up our randomizer. So be ready to. Be ready to get ready. Be ready to get ready to use your accent. So you went okay, first on the I'll last one. I'm gonna start here. I I will say that I am a huge fan of the you do X Y and Z cards. Sure. I think they're really good. That being said, and similar to animal animal forms, all of them are created equally, but I feel like some of them are a little better. And I feel mm -hmm. like this one, which can kind of get a little wet. Okay. I think has a lot of value in the modality compared to and the cost of it so i feel like you come to a river is one of the best options that you have in here 
Sure. It, so for, for those who don't know, this is a colorless and a blue for an instant. That's a common. You can get it for a quarter. Uh, and you have choose one, right? So one is fight the current, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. And then the second one is uh, find a crossing. Target creature gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn and can't be blocked this turn. So the reason why I really like this card is the modality. I think if it said return target creature to its owner's hand, fine, right? Um, return target whatever else, any other single permanent type, I think it's fine. But the fact that you pretty much get any bounce that you want, right? A problematic sure. planeswalker that's about to ultimate at instant speed for two mana. Problematic enchantment, yep. propagandas, all that stuff. Um, I think that's really strong. And then finally, you do have some creatures in here in the east section that do get kind of big and can kind of get oh, big yeah. quickly. So for me, giving them that option to buff and more importantly, not get blocked to come out and swing out for 10 damage, 15 damage, however much it may be, you're, not, you're probably not going to be winning off commander damage. So some of these bigger creatures that you have in here being able to go in and not even and your opponents don't even have to think, right? They just have to take it at instant yeah. speed in response to declaring blockers, anything like that. For me, I think this is this for me is like S tier of the you choose your own adventure cards. Yeah, that's fair. I am, um, yeah. I, I it's it is a um. It's also again, it's just it's kind of people again. People underestimate bounce. They really do. Reason. Like, oh, it doesn't destroy it, right? But for two mana, you could do like cyclonic rift, and it's like okay, fine, I guess. But like, but but it's like at the same time, if you. If you've, if, particularly if they've got like an expensive commander, yes, or whatever that is a problem, and you can go, cool. Well, now I need you to spend that mana again because, right, I, I don't, I don't want that on my board coming at my face. I need to, right. I need you to spend. And you, and you talked about like commander, commander beacon is such a strong card, right? And this is effectively mm -hmm. like a commander beacon when they don't want it, right? If if people who yeah. run commander beacons are running commanders that are six, seven. God help yeah. them, eight drop commanders, right? That could be completely backbreaking if you throw it in. This can save yeah. this can save you from a critical strike if someone's suited up. This can save you from infect. I, I think yeah. you come to a river really for and especially for a, a quarter, a gumball. Um, you will get a kick out of this. We actually recently built decks for each other, uh, me and Mr. Okay. Combo, that cost a dollar in total. One dollar in total. Wow. Not okay. not not counting the commander, not counting basic lands. Sure. And this was one that I snuck in. I think at the time it was 10 cents, which when you put a 10 or 8 cents card into that, I think that really shows the card's value there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But anyways, yeah, that's I mean, it's, that's that's it's you come to river. Card. So what's your so what's your first pick? Uh okay. So this one is also one of the you cards. Okay. I'm getting I'm getting um, ready. I'm getting ready here. Is it new or um, old? It's old. Okay. I think it's old. Um yeah, it is old. Um, but it's 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 a rare one in that it, it has like three modes to it rather than two. Um, oh, that is and, good. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. It's I did not choose this one. Okay, okay. So it's it's you find a cursed idol. This is really good. This is it's, really it's good. A, it's and it's it's really good because it's it's removal first. Of yes. All. So so you find a cursed idol is one. Uh, sorry, I should do an accent. Should we do the accent? No, no, no. We only do that on flavor text. So on flavor text, on cool, flavor text, yeah. Okay. Um, so you find the cursed idol is one on a green instant sp uh, sorcery speed, um, but, uh, common, but it may be a sorcery speed. However, it's got choose one, smash it, destroy target artifact, lift the curse, destroy target enchantment, steal its eyes, create a treasure token, and venture into the dungeon. So particularly in this deck, it's great though it's sorcery and not instant. Sure. Um, it's great because it's removal for for that propaganda. It's removal for, you know, the ghostly prison or whatever whatever it is that's causing you a problem. Or yep. like someone's someone's got a, a grafted exoskeleton that they've attached their Voltron commander, and you're like, right. no, thank you. Yeah, I don't want to and die to if, that. It's absolutely. And if you've got nothing else, but you like, you need a bit a cheeky bit of ramp or like. You need to one. I, one I need to go adventure. venture one more time, right? And then I can complete yeah, exactly. this dungeon. Yes, it's it's got that third like. That's probably not the one you're ever going to use it for, but it's there, right? If you need it, and and, and I, I I love that. I think if you compare this to like 
rampant growth is played everywhere, right? Sorcery mm-hmm. speed, ramps you won, granted it lasts you, quote unquote, for the rest of the game. But I think it's like if you look at it in that way, if you open the if you this card will enable you to take like risky openers, right? Where you're like, okay, I know yeah. I got two lands and a bunch of four drops, right? I sure. can I might be able to hit a mana rock or I, I got two lands, uh, you find curse idol and a bunch of four drops, right? So okay, I effectively yeah. have three draws to find either a land or ramp spell, and worst case scenario, you burn this. Now let me ask you this one: If do you think that this card's how far do you think this card's value gets diminished if it's if the steal its eyes varietal is just a treasure token and no venture? Do you think it's do you think it's like not near as strong? Like where do you where do you think about that? I would well no because I, I would still say it's it's up there because I mean nine times out of ten if you're running if you're running this card in your deck, uh, I mean nine times out of ten if you're running this card in your deck you're running a, a dungeon deck. That, that's right, 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 right. It it means so, but that basically is the case in a non dungeon deck is it's just destroy this destroy that or create a treasure token. Right. And again, it's still got that exact same utility of going, I can get rid of a problem on the board, or I can just give myself a little bit of ramp if I need one. Right. Because how many times have we as players gone, (laughs) I just need one more mana. If I had one more mana, I could get my commander out. Everything's got to be different, right? Yeah. (laughs) And it's, it's, uh, specifically if it's like, I've got so much green, but I need one more yes, blue. Right. And you're like, okay, well, I'll use two of those green. I'll get a treasure. I'll use that treasure. Now I have my blue. Here comes the board wipe. Here comes the bomb. Yes. You know what I mean? Abso- it's- absolutely. It's a, it's it's a strong one. So that, I think that I think this one is is probably S or A tier as well, right? When you look at the U at the U chooses. Uh, so I have I have one more. Okay. I have one more U choose ish okay. and this is a your varietal oh ooh, okay okay but it's the only one that's not a contraction okay i th- I, I we did not match we're clear we okay i think this i so okay the one i went with is your temple is under attack okay two colors in a, in a white for an instant um it's a uh common for about 50 cents Choose one. One, pray for protection. Creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Option two, strike a deal. You and target opponent each draw two cards. There is flavor text on here and Randy Optimizer. So how this used to work is we we abandoned this bit quite a time ago. So I'm excited to bring okay. it back. But we would ask, uh, we would ask, we would we would compare our notes and find the voices of people and who said them. Mm-hmm. Right. And then we'd go to our patrons and we'd say, okay, who do you think nickel bullets would sound like? Right. And they would come back with us. So this one, yeah. um, this, this one's kind of, some of them are extremely esoteric and some of them are like, just for example, Pikachu, these, they only <laughs> say their name. So this one, <clears throat> I can't remember who sent this out. We should have written this down, but we the winner is Chandra, who in this case sounds like uh, sounds like Optimus Prime. So here we go. I also uh, I know you probably haven't listened to any of our podcasts since we just met literally four days ago. Uh, I am notoriously bad at voices unless they're female. It. It's just something weird. So here we go. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Autobots, you you trespass on sacred grounds. Monsters, leave while you still can. Terrible. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, rounds of applause. <laughs> Insert that in post production. Uh, our overlords is Zencaster. <laughs> so here's my thing. I feel like in this deck, this card is probably good to okay. It, it, it fits a the theme. I think in Boros decks and uh, white mm-hmm. green and these decks where card draws at a premium, I think this card is like borderline like unstoppable right sure you you there's effects where um there's effects where you can make things indestructible for free there's ones that cost a little bit less but the fact that you have that option like we just said right and that's why these mortal cards are just completely bonkers Mm -hmm. is it's it it's like okay cool there's someone when you play a game of commander there's never there's always someone who's ahead right yeah. At any no. point of the game, there's always there's there's or unless you're playing a very slow game or it's like turn three, there's someone who is a threat, 
right? Sure. You're yes. like, this person's going crazy. So worst case scenario in here, you're like, I'm running out of cards. I miss my ramp. I miss my I miss my grain bills, right? I'm just missing these cards. I'm going to be able to curry favor with someone and just give them two cards, right? And the chance of giving someone two cards and them just winning the game is, unless it's very, very late in the game, to me is, sure. it, it, it's like nothing, right? You win, fa- yeah, no, you win favor with the table. And worst case scenario, board wipe comes, bam, you're protected, that sort of things. I think your temple under attack for 50 cents is an insanely strong card. Yeah, no, I'm I I'm inclined to that was that was that was right on the cusp. Up there. That yeah. was right on the cusp. I, I, I went with a I went with villain's lair instead. But Oh um, okay. Nice. Well that temple under attack. But so you like it. Have you gotten a chance to play it yet? Um No, I did I did get to do Villain's Lair, which is probably why Villain's Lair won out, because I got to play oh. Villain's Lair yesterday. But I haven't played Temple Under Attack, but it is Honestly, what I was when I was building this deck, I was just like, I just want to use all of them. Yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Why wouldn't you? But as I was doing that, as I as I played it yesterday, and as I've looked through this, when I was looking through this list um, to, to to sort into these categories, I was looking at them again uh, from a different eye, rather than just going, just throw them all in there. Yes. And like, there are so many of them that are just good cards, and right. this is one of them. This is absolutely yeah. one of them. And and it's also the we've all we've had like literally blowout arguments on the on the show about like one card where it's like well in this situation it's a grain it's a hop and that sort of thing but anyways yeah, you sure. so so you mentioned that you do have another you yeah yeah my, okay. my other my other you all right take it take it away you got you got this okay my other you was you find find the villain's lair which also is very strong uh, <laughs> yeah which is one and two blue instant speed common uh, it says choose one foil their scheme counter target spell it's a three three mana uh, counter spell that's I, I know there's a lot of one drops or free or yeah. two drop um mana spells but at the same time three isn't too much in my opinion Correct. and then the other option is learn their secrets which is draw two then discard two uh and there is flavor text as All right. well so so this one, I know, I don't know if this, if this cross upon, but you did land on Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, okay. Do you think it, okay. do you want to give it a shot or do you want me to pick another one? No, I'll, I'll try it. Okay. <clears throat> give me just a moment. I almost have it. Nailed it. Yes. Rory applause. <laughs> That's my best Jerry Seinfeld. It's good. It's it's good. It's really good. That was solid. Um, it, it, uh, a lot of times it's just like, hey, what's the deal? And then you go into it, but whatever. So, yeah, yeah. so cancel, like you said. Three mana, never see it played, right? Sure. Divin- effectively divination, three mana, don't see it played outside of Popper and that thing. Do you feel that the, the draw to discard in this deck is... How do you how do you feel about that discard, right? Like that's that's what I'm interested in. Do you think it doesn't matter because you're you're drawing so many cards, you always have two that you don't need? Yeah, I mean, like because particularly in this deck because of Chulain himself. Yes. Uh, there is a very good chance that you have the lands you need um, for the deck for, for for the for the turn you're on. Um, which means nine times out of ten, you can just chuck two lands. Yeah, because absolutely, you'll, you'll, you'll probably have them in your hand uh, because you've drawn twenty cards the last turn. <laughs> and so you're like, I, I don't need, I don't need six lands. So right. Yeah. Ch- chuck these two, uh, and then draw two new cards. Be ready. Have, potentially have because uh, uh, I, I do have one other three mana counter spell in there. Um, but like potentially have the next counter spell. Do you know what right. I mean? It's, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, p- drawing cards is always a good thing. And if I'm dropping it to not use that as a counter spell, but to use that as the looting, yeah, it means I need those two cards. Yeah, for sure. And I think with, I think another thing with all, with all of the, I feel like in a deck like this, people are going to really be focusing on the creatures that you're playing. Right. And when you leave mana up, you're probably like, oh, he's just either misses creature drops or whatever. But I think once you get, like, once you start casting a couple of these U cards at instant speed, you can hold this up for an entire turn and be like, uh, yeah, okay, I got three mana. I got five cards in hand and three mana open. 
like, all right, I'm done. And then just put your cards down. And everyone's going to be like, I don't have these cards memorized. Is there, was one of them a counter spell? Is one of them a destroy a creature? Yeah, like, is one exactly. of them a bounce? Like, who knows, right? And then the turn passes. And then now you're like, okay, perfect. Like, bluff never got called. I'm just going to draw my two cards and pitch two things I don't need, right? Do that. Absolutely, yeah. 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 It's 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 really good. So the last the last card I have is one, and I think we're both... Oh, you actually do have Cyclonic Rift in the deck. Funny we mentioned that earlier. Um, mm -hmm. This is another... This is another board wipe, but what I what what I kind of see this card as is this is also a modal card because I think that another wet card, but it's wet out okay. of your eyes. I'm, I assume I'm solo on this, right? I think you're solo on this. Okay, one, cool. I know I know the one you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. so I think Flood of Tears is a modal card in this deck, and here's why. So four colorless. Uh, double blue for a sorcery. It's a rare for about $1.29. Return yeah. all non-land permanents to their owner's hands. If you return four or more non-token permanents you control this way, you may put a permanent card from your hand on the battlefield. Um, and we do have a voice here. This is one of my least favorite ones. Um, this is Caught the Hammer, which is supposed to be the high-voiced, jacked Canadian from the Adam, Adam Sandler uh, movie Grown Ups. <laughs> So, like I said, some okay. of these are extremely esoteric, so... <laughs> God, it's been so long since I've even tried these. <laughs> okay. I'm excited. All right. It's, this is going to be bad. I'm just warning you. So, it's like... I was just in Canada, too. This shouldn't be this hard. Hey! I was down... I was uh, sorry about that. I was down at the corner store getting some poutine, uh, and then I noticed you here, and I have wept with such a torrent... As to scour the land clean. That was bad. That was like not even Canadian. <laughs> I told you, I, 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 oh, there's a, it. we were doing this for like a year and I started kind of getting in the groove of it, but I, I, it's just a nightmare. So this is why I think this card's modal too, right? So obviously, mm -hmm. Tulane, very strong commander, right? Um, yes. In any deck that you build, whether it's yeah, adventures, dungeons, um, sure. any of these sort of things, right? It, it's, he's just strong on the board. So often the strongest card in the deck. Agreed, right? So I think people, when you flip him over, are going to say, oh, okay, we need to keep this guy under control, right? So in that case, it's a great board wipe, right? You're always going to have, you, you usually, when you pull this, will have the requisite to be able to drop two lane back down or something like that, kind of get you out of bind. But this is why I think this is a modal card, because I think that you can probably get to a point in this deck with the amount of mana that you have, maybe some low cross creatures and that sort of thing, where you're like, you know what? If I cast this card and I return two lane back to the battlefield, I'm gonna be I will be able to be so far ahead of my opponents with all mm -hmm. the enter the battlefields with the ventures with all these different yeah. things that they're not gonna be able to catch up when they're just when they're just playing quote unquote fair magic and recasting sure. their stuff right like do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like does it's, that make sense or, or am I reading this no, wrong? No, no, no. You're exactly right. It's it's because. <laughs> Because Tulane is is insane. So, yeah. like, the second you the second you put, throw like someone's going in for a for a a, a, board, a proper board wipe. Right. Someone's casting farewell. Uh, except it's an instant, so you it, so it's sure, sure, sure. speed. But like someone someone's you've seen someone pull a farewell. You know right. that they're going to do that. They've tutored for it or whatever, and you're like, okay, I need that not to happen. So <laughs> like yeah, you can flood of tears. And you throw that. It is Tulane is an engine. Yes. Alone. So if right. you have to um, get rid of everyone's stuff and then just start going again, Flood of Tears is a and it's it's yes, it's symmetrical. So therefore, right. it's not as good as Cyclonic Rift because you're putting your stuff away. But but again, because of that just that little extra text that you may put a permanent from your hand onto the battlefield, like instantly this is this is just as good as psych rift yep because you can you're just gonna be you're gonna be able to respond you're you gonna know. be able to build so much faster back right yeah nice i I think this card's great i don't think it's played enough right especially for the buck like this is like quote unquote poverty tier if you will of board wipes right and i think i think for that for a buck 45 or whatever it boiled down to i think it's got that kind of utility to it yeah i mean i, I one of the cards i spent i spent the money on a psych rift when I was sure. working on the ship. Yeah. And like, I then discovered this card and a couple of the other similar board wipes. And I was like, honestly, I didn't, 
I think you don't need to. You spend don't need it. You don't need five it. bucks on. Well, on this, so you'll like you'll like this, right? So back when I was playing, I think when I think the I bought like five copies of Psych Rift at like six dollars or something like that. And like, and, but to your point, like, okay, quick side panel on this. I am I am running fewer and fewer board wipes in my deck, and the sure. reason why is because with the group I play now in Charlotte. It's it's a very casual meta, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when you, you do board wipes, I feel like you're just buying time. And there's yeah. a lot been a lot of times where it's like, okay, if I board wipe, I'm effectively playing explore. I'm gonna be able to draw a card and maybe play a land, and yeah. everyone else is gonna be sitting here for another thirty minutes. So I, I think if you look at Flood of Tears and the fact that you do get that value out of it, to me this could be yeah. this could be a very this could be the board wipe that you win the game off of, right? Because everyone else is going to be yeah, back. Right, so, so. And, and again, particularly with Tulane, because all you need is... Like, Ch bounce Tulane, bounce put Tulane back. Throw Tulane down, <laughs> and if you've got a two-drop creature, like, let's say you've got... Uh, find someone who's, who's a two-drop. Dawnbreaker Cleric. Yeah. yeah, Dawnbreaker Cleric. Or even Gretchen herself. Oh, of course, right? <laughs> Your like, girl. And you just play Gretchen Titchwillow. Instantly, you've drawn another card. And if you have a land in your hand, that's now on the field as well. Yep. Yeah, it's 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 bonkers. So that I'm I'm glad you feel with me on that. We have one more in the hop section. Um, this is all you. Let her rip. What do you got? Um. Okay. So this is also a U card. I love the U cards. I have. Learned. They're very. They're all awesome. Like I tried to build a U deck for Mister Combo for the dollar deck, and it's like I can't do it mm -hmm. because three of them are twenty five cents or whatever. So what's your what's your last one? Okay. So it is. It is. One of the cheapest uh, cards in it, it, one of the cheapest U cards uh, in terms of mana value, uh, and it's it's not something you see a lot in blue. I've found at instant speed. So uh, I don't know if we're going to be on the. Be I'm on the done. I did, I've done my three. You, oh, you've done. You've done. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, lovely. Um, is it you see a guard so approach? It's you see a guard approach. It's, it's really good. Yeah, it's bonkers. Yeah, because so you see a guard approach is, is a one blue mana instant speed common. Choose one modal card. Distract the guard. Tap target creature. But also hide target creature you control gains hex proof until end of turn. And there is flavor text. So <laughs> so we you I I'm glad that you got the flavor text first because this one should be a slam dunk for you. So we have Selenia, the Dark Angel, who has been coded as a Scottish woman. Oh, <laughs> uh, looks like we've got company. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> so good. Um, but it's it's a it's a Tamio's um, safekeeping. Yes, it's, it's a silk guard. It's a there's loads of this stuff in green. I mean, obviously, there's heroic intervention. It's probably the most famous one of these. Of course, yeah, the Ur, the Ur example, if you will, right? Yeah, exactly that. But like in blue, most of the time, if you want to protect your creature for one mana, it's a bounce spell. You're bouncing it back to your hand. Yep, yep. This is I get to keep my creature on the field. I give it hexproof. You can no longer target Tulane. You can no longer do right. that. Right. Yeah, for I was gonna one say. Let's be, let's be honest here. This is this says what. I think the subtext of this card reads one blue two lane doesn't die to path of exile or swords of plowshares. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly uh, that. And I think the tapping part of it is also underrated, right? Because yeah. I, it goes back to the other U cards we're talking about where it's like, you have your mana open and then it's like, I, I love playing politics. Like as you saw on Monday, it's my favorite mm -hmm. thing, right? Like I'm coming mm -hmm. in for a taste mm -hmm. just for this sort of thing. But if you don't do this, let's wait for these turns. So I think this is another thing where it's just like, look, I got mana open, right? And you don't know, you don't even know what could be here, right? Like you, <laughs> the, the next magic card is you don't know what's in my hand. Um, <laughs> but like, you're like, listen, if you, it, unless you tell me right now that you're not attacking me, I'm going to stop your commander damage. Yeah. And like, and like, try it, right? And they're like, um, like, they're like, sorry, I, I can't make that promise. You're like, all right, well, before we go to combat, one blue, right? Yeah. Turn over. Or, I think, or even if you're, you're, you're trying to swing through for the win, yeah. you're trying to swing through to kill, and 
like you you hold up that one blue mana, everyone thinks you nine times out of ten you're in blue. You've got one blue mana open. Everyone's sitting there thinking that's a counter spell. Yeah, swan song, uh, swan an song. offer you can't can't refuse for you youngins that play in the game. Yeah, yeah, and everyone's thinking that. So you go cool. They've got a a, a big beefy boy up with flying and yeah. and six toughness, <laughs> and they're like, all right. Try it. Yeah, and right. Go, okay. right. <laughs> and then you swing in and they go, and I go, before blockers, boom, tap. Yeah. You can't block with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, take 10 because I've completed three dungeons and you let me crack my planeswalker, right? <laughs> exactly. It's, 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 there's a lot of non-removal removal that I think gets overlooked because people yes. think exile and destruction have to, because That's they are it. more permanent and i obviously they're they're better because removing something forever is far better than making something unavailable in that moment right but there is something so much to be said for making a thing un in because that clutch games like right. tapping down a creature before you swing in or tapping down a creature as it's coming for you that can end games on its own and pe people people Focus so much, I think, now because there are so many options Path of Exiles, Plowshares, uh, Beast Within's, and all that lot that are like destruction and removal cards right. in that sense. That they don't think, oh, well, yeah, bouncing things isn't necessary or tapping things isn't necessary. It's like, well, it can still get you through. And Commander is such an interesting game where it's like it could, one turn could be it, right? Like the difference between a win and a loss in commander could be a tapped creature, could be a bounced, uh, could be a bounced oh, yeah. enchantment, right? Could be a bounced planeswalker that's about to ultimate. So, I I, I agree. Like I think yeah. these U cards are criminally underplayed. Um, I think they're not all. Now that being said, they're not all created equal. But I think the ones we talked about here really yeah. have a lot of juice to them. So, um, we're gonna we're gonna end the hops and go on into the use rule up. But before we do that, we do want to remind you guys that we have an excellent sponsor from abyssproxyshop.com. They are uh, they create uh, proxies or as we call them here, play test cards. They look great. Um, Mr. Combo has two decks that are completely blinged out from uh, from abyssproxyshop.com. If you go to their website, you can search all of the different cards. They have things like even they, they keep it updated. Like they already have ones for Ancient Bronze Dragon and these other biggest heavy hitters that cost seventy dollars. And uh, mm -hmm. depending on your play group, you know, do that within a certain amount of risk because they do have Aber duels and that sort of thing. Um, always talk, always rule zero. Always talk to your play group about them. But if you use code CMD Tower, if you <laughs> CMD Tower .com, it's like a habit right now. But if you use code CMD Tower, you will get an additional discount on top of the discounts that they offer you on the site. Those do stack. So um, we've had a lot of we've had a lot of love with them. Those guys are great over there. So remember abyssproxyshop.com uh, with the code CMD Tower. So now we're gonna get in on how this on how this deck wins, and. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not as many options previously, so I'm guessing we're probably going to have a few more crossovers, but I, you get to go first. What is your first pick, Kenny, for the yeast section? Okay. Um, we do have 11. So we, this, we have 11 options. Yes, yes, because we've taken one off the table from the uh, <laughs> grains. But um, so this is, is, a, is, it is a creature. Okay. Um, and... It's is it white? Probably, is it white in in? It, it is white. Okay. All right. That makes me um, makes me very nervous. <laughs> it's on the lower end of the cost of things. Um, of, as in terms of mana value. Okay. Okay. Value. That that's that's not a, that's not a good that's not a clue. Is it a? Would you say this is a PC or an NPC? Oh, this is a PC. Let's go, baby. Card rules. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Nadar, Nadar. selfless paladin. What a bl what a blowout! I'm gonna go through this real quick because I think this card is great. Two colors and a white for a legendary creature, Dragon Knight, which I'm guessing is paladin. It's got to be right. Mm -hmm. So, but they mm -hmm. wizards with their casting, it doesn't yeah. matter. You would never mind. I don't I don't want to get into this. It's a three th <laughs> it's a three three that's rare for around a dollar. Vigilance. When Nadar Selfless Paladin enters the battlefield or tax venture into the dungeon, but most importantly, other creatures you control get plus one plus one as long as you completed a dungeon. Yep. Wow. 
What a so blowout, strong. right? <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. so strong. Now, I so I've seen this card played in like modern decks because a 3-3 three, three for three that has Vigilance is sometimes unbeatable if it sticks around. Do you, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, like, wh- obviously there's a lot of things going on here, right? On this card, mm-hmm. it's very strong. There's a lot to dissect. What do you, th- what do you think is like, wh- which part of this card do you feel is like the strongest that it comes out of? Um, honestly, it's, it's the fact that it's, it's a three, three with vigilance, which means that trigger, because it's not deals combat damage, right. it's when it attacks, that trigger is going to get you through, particularly if you manage to get Nadar down turn, turn three. Or oh, turn if you can, two. oh my God. Yeah. It's like brutal. That trigger is going to keep going and you are going to, and, and then if you've got one of the other ones, I got a couple of the others on this on this list through. Like you're gonna get through those dungeons so fast, and it's like you're gonna get so much value yeah. just from this one card sw- coming in and swinging in. Right. And then, like the, the other ability, the the a nice plus one plus one pump can be the difference between a board wipe and not right. a board wipe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it may, it's, it's one more man. It's one more life for toxic deluge and that sort of things. But I think like. Yeah. I think that um, I think the best can if if you could like errata partners. I think the strongest one would be Nadar and Ellie Wick. If you could do some bizarre Paul, oh. oh my god, it'd be like it'd be like it'd be so strong, right? So I, I think like I feel like a lot of people look at this card and be like, oh, it's a three three for three with vigilance, whatever. And you're like, yeah, sort of, I guess, but. Yeah. there's so much other like I don't know I, I feel like there's so much value packed into this thing a lot of times you just like you just need to start right like you just need to start yeah. the dungeon train going and yeah. being able to do this like okay worst case scenario right this is the absolute floor of it well okay this mm-hmm. is the there's two floors of it the, the the lowest floor is you pay three mana you get a three three with vigilance it enters the battlefield you vent you venture into the or well, I guess it gets counterspelled but <laughs> you, you vent you vent, <laughs> sure. yeah. But you vent, you venture into the dungeon, so you just pay three mana to get a creature in the battlefield and venture into the dungeon, right? Sure. Things things are borderline dreamed of, right? And that's yeah, it. Yeah. That's the that's the absolute floor, right? The the worst this yeah. card can be if it if it's in play is that. The second worst ability is you pay three mana and ventured twice into the dungeon and this thing died. I'm I I mean you know this better than me. There's no other card for that value for three mana that you're borderline. You're kind of guaranteed of sorts to get to venture twice, right? Yeah, more pretty much like because also again because the literally the way you describe it is like it's a three three for three with vigilance. People look at it and go, oh okay, great. <laughs> if if I'm looking at the board and I've got a number of things that I can remove, someone's just dropped this thing, this three drop here or this two drop here. Exactly. Nadar's not on the top of the list. Nadar is never on the top of the list. Exactly. And that means you're probably going to get, yeah, like you say, at least two triggers off, which means they pay for it. It, it, it pays for itself. For itself. Yeah. And like, if you're playing, if you're like in my play group, someone has a slower start. Someone mm-hmm. is playing tokens, right? Like this thing will eat Drake, zombies, elves, Easy. Every day for breakfast. So I, I think for the low value of, of what you uh, like, the low investment and the low cost of the card, it's a dollar, it's a buck. Yeah. Insane levels of value through here. Can I can I tell you something honestly? Yes, please. Uh, so, so you talk about Nadar and Eliwick. And Nadar and Eliwick are the reason this deck, like, ever came to pass in my brain. Really? So Tulane, Tulane was the commander I was waiting for. Right. It. I'd already built him as adventures. Um, but I had I pulled Nadar and Eliwick in a in a, a pack. Really? Um, like, yeah, way back. And I was like I really like these two cards. I really like these two cards. I don't think I'm ever gonna run a dungeon themed deck because I didn't like Sephiris as a I felt like, like Sephiris was too slow. Yeah, it's um, it's it's kinda in like We've talked about Sephiroth on the show at least once, or some builds like him, and like I think that I think that Dex. <laughs> it's ironic that I say this about Chulane, but I feel like that deck <laughs> fall, falls a little too far into like, uh, what is that? Esper. You can run it as like an es- Esper good stuff yeah. with a handful of dungeon stuff. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Uh, but th- so so pulling the dart. I pulled the dart first, and then I pulled Eliwick, and I went. 
I want to find a place. Yes. For you. I even went and bought like before I even had the deck in mind. I bought the emblem. <laughs> I just went online. This will like, this will that. happen. <laughs> yeah, and I just was sat there like I I want to find a good. And when Baldur's Gate came out, I was like, <sighs> but then I just built and been running for like about a month. I've been running my two lane ad adventures. Mm -hmm. And you also, like, that, that deck also got a huge boost through Baldur's Gate, right? It, oh, absolutely. And it became, yeah. a, before Baldur's Gate, it was a trash deck. Even with you <laughs> at the helm, it was just a trash deck. Uh, it's now become a viable deck. But, like, I was just looking at him, and I was like, well, he's a teller of tales. He's a, he's, a, he's a dungeon master. Yeah. And and I had all the U cards, like, just in my my binders. Yeah, if you, if you, cr if you cracked like, any amount of Adventures in Forgotten Realms, you just have a pile of them yeah. lying around, right? You have, six, you have like, six copies of you come to a river or whatever. Exactly, and I just went. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna build this deck, and so I, I, I did. And it's, it started. The seed was planted by Nadar and Eliwick. Nice. And then it started to grow and blossom. But they, but they are. We all, we both, did. we both agree they are way too strong to be together in the command zone, right? That's. Oh yeah. That's like oh, I, way too strong, right? If someone was like, you know how like Commander versus you, and stuff like that, rule zero stuff and things. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, hold on. Commander versus the. Uh, the show for adults comparative to the command zone, the show for children hashtag coming for you, Jimmy. <laughs> we'll bring, we're bringing it back. Sorry. We've had, we've had, a, I've had a long, we've, uh, so I'll tell you this at the, remind me about the Jimmy story at the pause break. You'll think it's very funny. Um, okay, but do. yes, I'm glad you're also a man uh, of wealth and taste, but yes. So yeah. like out, outside of those sort of things, I think if you brought mm -hmm. that to a table, people would be like, we're, I'm not going to play against this. Right. Exactly, because I mean, the second you've got a, a you've got so much venturing through dungeons. Yeah. The second you've got one dungeon done, you now have a six six vigilance haste right. trampler. That's yeah, that's it, and that's your and commander like, emblemed. Yeah, boom, very strong. Uh, and it's it's uh, 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 well, no, sorry, Nadal would be it's a, a five five, five right? It's, yeah, still, there's still five, but then everything else you've got, right? Anything like else, a, a anything else, it's legendary, it's, whatever, yeah. Um, and it's not like Sles it's not like Selesnia colors are known for having good efficient creatures at low mana cost, right? No, never, no. never, never heard of it. So um, th that's so there's that. I think Nadar is definitely a key piece, a cornerstone of the deck. There's another card in here that I think is a keystone in a different way, and it costs okay. the same. But this is okay. a, this is definitely I feel an NPC character at best because they don't. Okay. It's not legendary, but. Still very, very strong. I assume I'm on my own on this one. Uh, you you are on your own okay. on this one, but, uh, but I agree with you. Strong. So White Plume Adventurer, to me, is a blowout. Two colors and a white for a 3-3 three, three creature or cleric. It's rare for about 80 cents. Uh, two major abilities, right? When it enters the battlefield, you take the initiative. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, Untap a creature or control. Sorry, untap shoe lane. If you completed a dungeon, untap all creatures you control instead. It's completely bonkers. Uh -huh. I think like uh, one of the guys from Elder Drunken Highlander, Kevin uh, K. Ellis, he played this card in some bizarro deck that he always builds. He's like a I super weird. I actually played Kevin. Uh, I, I was pl I played against Kevin's uh, five color uh, Niv Mizzet like two weeks ago. Was that no right? way, really? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Kev's great. He, yeah, he's a great deck builder. Like, He's like a warlock when he builds his stuff. But he played this, oh, yeah. and this card was brutal. It's brutal, right? Like, giving any, like two yeah. lane, any of your, your other big butt creatures just to make a blocker. And I think, again, like in my opinion, this falls into the same category of those cards where it's like, uh, the one I can think of is like Skyline Despot, the dragon, right? Five colors, double red. Sure, when you sure. enter the battlefield, you become the monarch. Which is enough yeah. in its of itself, and then at the beginning of your upkeep, if you're a monarch, you do something else. In this case, create a dragon. Right? For me, I think this thing, just giving you the initiative, and no matter what, giving you something else for three mana mm -hmm. that's also a three three is insane value, right? And it, it really is. And and talking about being someone who likes to earn the heart, don't get me wrong, I I, I run Seaborn Muse and a lot of oh lot sure of absolutely, <laughs> but. In terms of wanting to earn the big bombs the hard way, this is a Seaborn Muse. Absolutely. For, like, completing the Undercity. Yes. Right. Which, again, with all the venture stuff that you're doing, pretty straightforward. So we, yeah. we've, we've talked about White Plume Adventure before. We don't need to get into much more. What is your, what's your second pick? We still, we still got a handful left. 
So this is this is um this is some equipment. You're on your own. You're you're let her run. Okay. I really like the addition of Trailblazer's torch. It's an interesting one. So it's again, it's when it comes in, uh it's uh you take the initiative. Yes. But it just it adds that that little extra protection for whatever creature it's it's attached to. Right. So whenever whenever it becomes blocked, so let's say we're swinging with Nadar. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's three through visions. Nadar gets blocked by a three two because they're thinking, Mwahaha, I'm gonna kill your Nadar, we're gonna trade. Right. And it's like, well, hang on a minute. No, you're not, because instantly two damage dealt to that, yes. that block is gone. And it's it, it can just be like a little bit of a little bit of, of cheeky removal attached right. to a creature. So the way we talk about this on the podcast is we call this a we call cards like this a modal card for your opponents. Sure. It's your opponent who has to make the choice, right? Like yeah, yeah. the modes are well, do I block and know something's going to die because it's going to be taking five in total? I can't block if I block with the token. It's like it's not that different, right? So yeah. I, I think I like that a lot. Getting the initiative, like I said, is clutch. And I think if this card. I feel like this card is maybe a tad bit overcosted for what it is, right? Yeah, I, I get that. But th the fact that it's equip one, I think cuts a lot of it out, right? Like, yes. I think this is a card. I think this is a good card to like, if you if you're kind of having a slower start, if you need to rebuild, and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna play land, I'm gonna play something else small, and I'm gonna play Trail vs. Torch, either progress through the Undercity or just like thin out my deck and draw basic. That's where I think this card slots into yeah. fairly well. And then if you have your big creatures and that sort of thing, can also slam through on that. So, and it's it, a again, quarter, it's particularly early game. It's yes, because people are gonna be throwing down their 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 two twos, their one twos. Or if you're the other thing is when you attach it to someone like Nadar, like you can then get through walls. Oh yes, yes. Because if someone's got like a like a, a a two five crab or whatever, and you're like, I haven't got I haven't got a, like a five damage removal. Swing in with Nadar, they go. I'm gonna block you with my wall, and you go. Cool, your wall's dead. Yeah, right. Like you, we we had we traded anyways, right? So is it worth a three damage? Yeah. Modal modal card, right? I love it. Your opponents have to think. Yeah. People don't like doing that magic. It throws them off their game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we get there. So I've. I have one more in the East section. Um, this is another U card. I think the okay. potentially last one that we can talk about. And I, I see why you have it in the East. I think this this is, again, it's tough because it's so situational. But sure. you meet in a tavern. First off, the artwork is awesome. Um, yes. So two colorless, double green for a sorcery. And again, a quarter, maybe a theme here. Choose one for a party. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may even reveal any number of creature cards from among them and put them into your hand, put the rest in your yeah. bottom in the library in random order. You got a lot of creatures in here and spoiler alert for the bottle capping. You're about to even have some more. So get ready for there. Right. You, like, okay. It's a green draw spell. Again, green can do everything, but <laughs> lastly creatures you control uh, start a, start a uh, brawl creatures you control get plus two plus two until in a turn. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like what you're talking about with Nadar, right? Plus one, plus one. Okay, fine. What? Your 2-2 two, two turns into a 3-3? Three, three, great, right? But when you have built up your massive boards, right? Your massive creatures. And there's there's a whole hell of a lot of ones in the spice section that we're not going to get to that I feel can grow pretty fast. Sure. And people, you're like, okay, we know he's going to combat, right? And people are already doing the mental gymnastics of, okay, I can block here. I can sack this token, do all this sort of things. And then you play this. I feel like mm -hmm. that 2-2 two, two is just enough to make people have to start thinking again of like, how am I going to block this, right? How, like, am I just going to take this? Am I just going to take damage and die? How do I get around this, right? It's it's just it's just that n enough of that mode to make them really have to think about how they're going to react to it, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it's if it had if it had if like, it had trample campaign. or something or like that'd be incredible. It'd be incredible. yeah, absolutely. Incredible. I mean, I mean, if we're being honest, this deck is the, the Eliwick Tumblestrom deck with with uh, with, with Tulane. Yeah, right, 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 right. But like again, with that Eliwick, you you, throw, you you get to say you haven't completed all the dungeons you want to complete, but you've managed to complete one, and you've got that emblem. So right. now everything's a three-three with Trample and Haste. That's cool. You drop this, 
they're now five fives with trample and haste. You're coming through. It's it like it, yes, it's it's just it's I just it's just good enough, right? Like I kind of wish it was yeah. like plus one plus one and menace or plus or like one of the odd ones, right? Some like, evasion, skulk, yeah. I guess. I don't know, but still, like <laughs> <laughs> who knows what the people over at Wizards are thinking, right? But it's it's Absolutely. it's just enough to be like, okay, I think this is actually going to punch through and this could win the game out. Yeah, I mean the, 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 the that first the, the first one the formal party is the one that um, also I didn't I, I didn't realize this but all four people on that artwork are in the use section. Um, Wait, really? The, <laughs> Who is it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you've got um, you've got Nadar. Yep. Uh, you've got Eliwick. Oh yes. You've got Hammer Hammer Pashar and Varys. <laughs> are the four people sat at the table. Um, but yeah, like um, that first one is the thing of being like okay. What do I what do I need? I yeah. where's Nadar? I need Nadar. Right. Yes. <laughs> exactly. What? If, okay. So if you cast this and you you reveal those four cards, mm -hmm. in my opinion, I would concede immediately. I'd be like, I there's nothing that can happen in this game that's better than what just happened right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, literally, you formed the party that you the, the dream party that you need is yeah. is is. I mean, just just ham on Nadar and and Varys alone and. Let's say let's put, let's put White Plume Adventurer in there as well. You know sure. I mean? Yeah. And then and you, your deck is just unless someone yeah. gets a board wipe now, we're gonna keep popping off. Yeah. We're gonna it, keep popping it, off. It, it's gonna be gonna... so hard to come back from. So that, so th yeah. that was mine again. Another great inclusion. Obviously, you got one more. What's the one you want to close us out with? Okay. Um. So I considered for a long time Hammer for Shah. Uh, however, she did not make the cut. This one is uh, probably the most expensive card in... No, it's not the most expensive card in that. It's the second most expensive card in my East section. Oh. Um, it's it it's is, the way. It's it the is, other way you win, right? Uh, well, no, no. This is the um, this is this is a creature. Because the, the other way I win is... I put that in because you always should have a, a backup. Yes, you of course. Yes, yes, yes. Um, for, for, those, for those listening and not looking at the deck list, yeah. I have approached the second sun in the deck because it's a lot of card draw. Yeah, easy, so easy. If you get that. Easy to cycle through, sure. Yeah, but the one I went with is uh, Radiant Solar. Very strong, yeah. Because it is, it is like an attachment to Tulane. Do you know right. what I mean? Like, yes, yes. So every time you cast a creature spell, you draw a card, you put a land onto the field, and you enter the dungeon. Yep. Yeah. Do you know it's what I mean? Bonkers. It's just... And it's a three and it's a three six that with flying a lifelink, right? So wasn't her. <laughs> yeah, right. And but here's the thing too, where it's like, right? So it, it's like what we're talking about with um one of the cards earlier. Oh, the um cursed treasure or whatever. Or you find a cursed, cursed idol. Cursed idol. Find a cursed idol. You're like you're getting ready to complete a dungeon and you're like, once I complete this dungeon, it's, it's, it's crickets for everyone. Right. I think this is yeah. what I always forget on this card too, is for one white at instant speed, discard it, bin it, venture into the dungeon, you gain three life. Right. Yeah. Like you, you can push through that last little bit. If just in case you're stuck, just in case you're stymied, anything like that for, I, I think this, if this card, I wish this card cost like one less. Like if it was, sure, I get that. If it was like, so it costs six if it was three colorless double whites instead. But the problem mm -hmm. with that is like Sarah Angel is the standard for that. And this is just better than any Sarah Angel that's ever been imprinted <laughs> or any varietal oh, yeah. on it, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, but, but I mean, it's also like it can be that safety net as well. Yes. Because, because that three life is like they're about to hit me. But because it's it's instant speed, discard. Yes. So Abs it's absolutely. Like, I they're about to hit me i'm on five life they're about to hit me for six life right they they did they did all the discard that, radiant solar they did all the math and everything and they're like all right you're toast man sorry and you're like well yeah. i don't know about that right <laughs> before damage discard radiant solar i'm on two yep I'm and i venture into the dungeon <laughs> and get oh, some beast or something else out of it too right exactly so good. So that's going to end the yeast section for us. And for those who are listening to us, uh, we do stream over on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash CMD tower. We sling cardboard rectangles every other Monday and then also stream the rest <laughs> of our content. Like at what? Are we doing it? Ready? Three, two, one. Wait, 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 wait. Get handed. Oh, get handed. That's it. Yes. Yeah, I know. We. I'm big right, on I'm bits. Like... I'm a big bits guy. I like bits. So... I love bits, but I was I was sat, I sat there. I was like, "Is it get 
<laughs> like, fa- it it can't be. Well, I listen. We ran up. <laughs> we, we ran up. Get F I. We ran. I'll just say it. We ran up. Get fisted up to up the board and. Uh, no, they said uh, they said people might be thinking we're they're tuned into a different Twitch channel for that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, but do you mean? Uh, yeah, it could, be, it could be anything. <laughs> but anyways, we we do stream there um, with great guests like Kenny here uh, every other Monday, and we do hashtag get handed. So, let's go into the spice. Um, Thirteen options here, right? Mm-hmm. A lot through here. So, uh, this is my pick. And one thing that's funny that I, we talked about, like the flavor text, we've noticed that a lot of these legendary cards and these things are so chock full of text. There's no room for flavor on them. So, yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, this was the first. This is one of the first cards that got printed um, when uh, 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 Adventures of the Forgotten Realms got printed. So, I have read Ari Salvador's books since the time I was about mm-hmm. ten years old, and. Mm-hmm. When it first got printed, I was this card I was furious about, right? Sure. He's he's an elf ranger. At least they coded mm-hmm. that right, which is up for debate. We're, I, are we are, are we doing this? We we are, we are very much. No so way! Sure. No way! Yeah, really? Yeah. yeah. I wow. Okay. Um. So let me finish my let me finish my spiel here. So. I know Wizards, uh, Wizards of the Coast owns all these things. Dungeons and Dragons and Magic the Gathering have been dear to my heart for a long time. Um, for me, this was a card that was like, we have been betrayed. I can't believe this is happening. How dare you? How dare you insult my childhood like this, right? And again, I'm 34 mm-hmm. years old, so I probably shouldn't have thoughts like this anyways, but here we are. <laughs> so, but the more I've seen this, and I have seen this card in play, I think it's not... How can I say this? It's like... The rule of the character is not present, but the spirit is, right? Yeah. And that yeah. one is three, two, one. Drizzt Dorn. I it is Dritz, right? There's not an I at the end of it. It's, yeah. It's Dritz. It's, always, how would you pronounce it? I always call him Drizzt Dorn. Drizzt Dorn. Okay. I've heard him Dritz. I've heard him Drizzt. So okay, uh, like, so I think this is my Midwest upbringing, right? Because we call it, we would call it Drizzit, and there's no I at the end of it, right? But you know, okay, so you know those things that um, sit on top of buildings that are like automated machine guns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What would you call those? A turret. So from the Midwest, for some reason, everyone says turret. Like that's a turret gun. Huh. <laughs> huh. It's weird, right? Like, so. Turrent, but yeah. with- yeah, a turret, but a turret. Like, I don't know. It's bizarre. But anyways, so uh, I'll read the outside, you read the inside. So three colorless, a green and a white for a 3-3 three, three legendary creature elf ranger that's a rare for about 50 cents. Okay, uh, it's got uh, double strike. And Good. When Driss Stewarden enters the battlefield, create Guinevere, a legendary 4-1, which I've also heard pronounced a million ways, yeah. a 4-1 green cat creature token with trample. And whenever a creature dies, if it had power greater than Drizzt's power, put a number of plus one, plus one counters on Drizzt equal to the difference. The difference. So um, also with the, I, we call this Guedevar back in the day, but mm-hmm. Guedevere, I'm pretty sure is from the uh, Sir Arthur the, legends, right? That's, that's that's probably why that's in my head. I was, was going to say, so I default, I, I default to the person where this, who's from the country of origin of where this word came from <laughs> on this. So here's the thing. Sure. It, it's kind of the, like, it's sort of the Tarask argument, right? That we had on stream mm-hmm. where it's like, this is the big daddy card, right? This is the end all sure. be all eater of worlds. And then the funny thing is, and honestly, the game on Monday kind of rethought me this. Tarask was, in fact, the ender of that game. It was yeah, like, so brutal, right? So it's, it's a harsh card. It's so strong. So with Dritz, again, it's like, you know, steal my childhood, bat credit card, so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah. I do think, though, since I've seen this played, not only is this an it's an interesting card, I do think that they did the best that they could, considering the limitations, comparing things from D and D, which is like formless, limitless, anything goes, into yeah, a game that has like one of the strictest and most complex rule sets ever made, right? 
Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I, like you say, I think they have the spread. I mean, giving giving us Guinevere, I don't think that's actually necessarily. I don't think that was necessary. I think that was someone having a good time, and I. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, double strike makes sense because obviously he's renowned for his his two swords. Yes. Um, and I think in the books now his daughter is is carrying one of them. Are they still? Wait, um, they're still making the. There's, there, I think a, a, a new Savitar book came out like. Oh this my year. god. Um, but the, okay. I like. Pause on that real quick. How yeah. how in the nine hells did we not get a Jarlaxle or an Artemis and Terry card from Baldur's Gate? Right? right. Like, is it because those are even like Jar? Like, how do you, how do you even? I mean, we could talk about this for like an hour. I'm sure. How do you even <laughs> print a Jarlaxle card? <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, black black would be in there. It would probably be. I would make him a three color potentially. Like, Espo, but like, like I think he would fit best as a planeswalker, right? Yeah. But that makes no yeah. sense. Well, I mean, granted, they make Minsk and Boo. And granted, for those who played Baldur's Gate, Minsk, not a planeswalker. Some would argue Minsk, not a function, not a fully functioning human adult. <laughs> no, no, very much so not. Um, but they printed two cut. Like, I think, is, is Minsk the only two, only character from like classic D&D stuff that's now got two cards in Magic? Because there's the Commander card and there's yes. the regular planeswalker. Yeah, I think so. Um, Which is funny because, like, you said you played Baldur's Gate too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minsk to me is like borderline not playable in that game, right? Yeah, he's he's like he's, it's he's like a he's, fun. He's like a it's, if you want to build. Okay, well, this is another thing. This is another entire podcast about our sure, sure. But like, correct me if I'm wrong. But like, the only time I ever played Minsk would be like, oh, I'm building a party of like the misfit toys, right? Of ones yeah. that are like, yeah, yeah. Are suboptimal builds, um, right? Cause, cause, um, and also his like his story, his because I mean I'm I'm always all in for the story. Mm -hmm. uh, Mass Effect's my favorite video series of video games oh, because cool. I fall in love with the story of every character and sure. every part of the world. But Minsk's story kind of falls off at the end of one, right? Because Dinah here or whoever is not in the picture, right? And like, what's his arc yeah, from there? I mean. Well, because also canonically, uh, spoiler alert, kind of maybe for a game twenty uh, years old. Canonically, yeah, no. yeah, for a game. But canonically, Dinah here. When you go to rescue her, you don't. Canon like the the actual ca canon is she dies. Oh, and really? His whole purpose. Yeah, his whole purpose was to to protect her. Yeah. And so he spends the rest. He's supposed to spend the rest of the game kind of lost. But if you play well, she doesn't, and yes. she becomes like a very valid companion, and it's kind of like. So you wrote his story to be about failure, this, yeah. <laughs> but we can very easily make that not the case, right? Right? So right? Now his story is about the fact that he talks to his space hamster, right? And Ooh. like, he's like the so the only <laughs> I think there's some gimmick. Okay, this is the last thing we'll say about Baldur's Gate Two, and then I'll let you finish your sure, tricks. Sure. You're just saying, but I think there's like there's some there's some like gimmick on it where it's like if you keep him in his party long enough you can shortcut into spell hold because they're like this person is clearly unwell get into the yeah. asylum if i remember correctly yeah. so, I uh, so. Uh, but anyways he's like c tier anyways so dritz double but, strike got it with the two-handed weapons um Guinev guinevere a uh, nice to have it's a bit fun yeah sure um i would argue that when you talk about capturing the spirit his ability is not only the most drizzed ability, but it's probably the most D and D ability you could have because it is all about overcoming insurmountable. Oh, odds. sure. So he, you kill the frost giant, which is far too high level for you. Right, right, right. So you then gain that experience oh, in the form of plus one plus one counters, right. and you become a six six or a or even a seven seven because now you've beaten the big scary thing. Sure. And so, therefore, he now that kind of really only makes sense in a one v one situation because if someone <laughs> else kills, if, if someone yeah. else kills Terra of the Peaks for you, and you get plus one, yeah. plus one counters. So, someone, someone casts a blasphemous act, and then you cast one of your all your creatures getting indestructible, and you're like, oh, now Drizzt yeah. is seventy seventy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Which, so like this, but that's what I'm saying. Like, bring back experience counters, right? Like, if you want to go, I know, which are totally broken and busted, I'm glad they didn't do it, right? 
like sure. if like the like the better version of this is like when another creature dies if it has higher power than dritz gain experience counter or whatever mm -hmm. and then dritz has plus one plus one and if you have seven he has you know first striker or whatever that's a bad yeah, example yeah, yeah. trample or whatever but i do like that idea of like and surrounding odds right like yeah. He's he's always been like this like a pseudo scrappy kind of yeah fighting people he's, against the things figuring stuff out perseverance of power of will he's the hero of D and D because he yes. came from he came from a, a world of he came from the drow which yeah. when they were first written were very dark much so not not friendly chaps yes um, and he overcame that to become this this hero and everything like that. now I know that there's a lot's been changed and errated to the law of D and D right. for the better. For certain. Pro probably yes. <laughs> um, but uh, but like he's still always going to be that character, and his all of his books are about him. Yeah. Overcoming something that really you shouldn't. He's he's the hero with a capital H. Right. You know what I mean, like right, and like he's, he's happy. And he always he, says he, he kind of always does like the right thing too, right? Like at yeah. what cost, right? Like the crystal, he could have just taken the crystal shard and been like, "Well, here we are," right? But he like intentionally yeah, went through exactly. out of his way, tricking a red dragon. Um, it's the funny part too about like seeing this happening and like especially Baldur's Gate. The mm -hmm. th that said, I was like, "Oh wow!" Like I've just now unlocked a quarter of my childhood and memories and sure. knowledge that I didn't even know I had left yeah, over. Yeah. But it like like I said, I was really upset when this first got printed, and then like you know, we all grow up. We're, we're all we're all we're all children learners, right? We're all we're all mm -hmm. learners of the world, and you know maybe a little bit after that, we we kind of uh, kind of sort it out. So, anyways, that's gonna wrap up the spice package, and now uh, we're gonna move on to the bottle capping. So I have pause the recording and for those watching on twitch thank you as always but we're going to take a short uh break and we'll be right back sweet
but uh, we're going to go off of, we're back on stream, and then we're going to start recording again. Is there anything else you need? No, I'm all good. All right, cool. So we're going to start recording in three, two, one. So as made mention earlier, uh, we, uh, because uh, Kenny didn't have a chance to get a ton of reps into this, we decided for me to go ahead and make the cuts myself. And we have um, three cuts, one under $5, one under $50 to $100, and then one that is finally no budget. So uh, I'm going to start here with, ironically, that we're talking about Dritz so much. Uh, I feel like his, I assume the mother of his children, mm -hmm. who is a central character in a lot of things, is a very interesting card. However, I am, mm -hmm. I know why she's in the deck. I'm not convinced she may be the best pick for the deck. <laughs> So for yeah. those who don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about Caddy Bree of Mithril Hall. So uh, that's Lesnia. Great. This I've seen this card do work. So no discredit there. Yeah. A green Great and a white. Commander. Great. Yeah. Um, green and a white for legendary creature, human archer. That's a rare. 35 cents. It's a 2-2 two -two with first strike and reach. Whenever uh, Caddy Bree attacks, put a 1-1 one -one count. Is, am I saying that right? We always said Caddy Bree. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, whenever she attacks, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it for each equipment attached to it. And then one colorless, remove uh, all 1-1 one -one counters from Caddy Bree. It deals X damage to target attacking or blocking creature and opponent controls where X is the number of counters move this way. This card can absolutely be a house. And I know why it's in the deck. It makes sense. Cool. That being said, I'm pretty sure I looked and I think you have two equipment in the entire deck. <laughs> Uh -huh, uh -huh. Between uh, Delver's torch and the it's Trailblazer's issue. torch, it's so issue the two torches, yeah. So again, I, it's on theme, so that's why I wasn't trying to be like I'm not trying to poo-poo it, but no, no. There's got to be cards cut. There's got to be good ones ads, right? So the one that I was shocked that you didn't have in here because I played a lot of Baldur's Gate pre-release when it came out when we went up in actually to Richmond Command Fest. I were you there? Mm -hmm. I I literally had to go back to the UK. Two days before, oh, dude. And I was it was it was fun, but it was exhausting. It was a very long weekend. But there was one card that um, came out of Baldur's Gate that everyone, someone drew it in a draft, was just completely brutal. And I think it, it's going to play right to the strengths of this deck with some minor caveats. And that one is Tomb of Horrors Adventurer. So it's five colors and a blue for a 4-4 four, four creature elf monk. When it enters the battlefield, you take the initiative. Then it says, whenever you cast your second spell each turn, copy it. If you've completed a dungeon, copy that spell twice instead. You may choose new targets for the copies, right? And it's about uh, it's 24 cents, 61 mm -hmm. if you want the promo. So this is, this is a bit of a risk for this one, right? And the reason why I say that is because you do have a lot of legendary creatures, right? Yeah. Which is which I get right. So, I think in my I but like this is each turn right. So the way I kind of think about this card is this right. Your first spell each turn. Well, first off, you get the initiative out the gates right. So sure. yeah. you're there. You're there. We're we're playing this game which we all love. I always feel like the first card is going to be your legendary card right. Mm -hmm. You get that all the way. Then your second one is one of the myriad of removal spells. You come to these sort of things and that sort of stuff, right? Because we've talked before, um, and I think the one of the the hops card of the Cursed Idol. So we talked about, like, well, it's like, okay, it's at sorcery speed and you kind of have to choose one, right? But with Tomb of Adventures Horror, there's no, for, there's no longer any downsides to casting any of these things. They will just get you every single time. So imagine, cool. imagine not even having to think about it, right? You're like, okay, great. Cursed Idol now is just paid for itself and ventured into the dungeon, into the Undercity. And the end of the Undercity, it's such a blowout. Getting there as quick as you can, I think, yeah, yeah. is pretty solid. So what do you think about the first cut and ad? Like, obviously... It, I, so, yeah, I mean, I'm with you 100% that Katy Bree... Caddy Bree is there because of the novels. If I could I, I, have listen, Wolfgar it, and Brunor in there as well, oh I would have done. Dude, also, no joke, uh, Wolfgar was the same thing where I was like, wow, that's how they did him dirty. That card is like, d is it in your uh, your Ignis deck or Ignis. whatever? Yes. Yeah, it's in my Ignis deck. I think it's like, it's like the best card in the deck, right? Yeah, it's literally, like, double doubling attack triggers. Oh. There's a reason Ish in Two Heavens as One became such a popular commander. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, it's it's just but <laughs> any anyway like that I, I like so you were saying that like you get it's in there obviously just for the for the lulls and for the flavors of it so yeah. 
I, I, it's a true spice card. What do you think about Tomb of, the Venture, of Horrors Adventure? Is it, is it too narrow with the amount of legendaries you have? So literally, it was the amount of legend. So I I looked at Tomb. I okay. had Tomb of Horrors in in my binder. Oh, nice. Um, and I, I looked at it and I went, "That's a good card." It is expensive in terms of. Agree. Raw cost. Uh, CMC. Yes. Yeah, man- mana cost. Um, but it, yeah. So. I didn't think of it from the perspective that you've just explained. I thought of it as a, if I'm trying to play creatures, which is obviously, it's a two lane deck, so that's what I'm yep. trying to do. And I'm, I throw down, uh, you know, I throw down Drizzt. Drizzt, yeah. I can't even get the two, I, I, I you know, I don't you even can't get, even get two tokens, Guinevere's because they're also they're legendary, legendary, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, okay, that's not, that's not great. But thinking about it the way you just described it, of being like, if it's on the field and I've completed a dungeon, going, play the creature and then keeping that mana up and holding that mana up because then if I play the instant yeah. speed, I now have multiple options. That's not a bad shout. I quite like it. It's it, like, it's right on the edge. And like, I have a soft spot for this card because, because I got beat by it like four times. <laughs> <laughs> so mm-hmm. I try to slam it in. But again, I, like if, if I, it, this is always hard because you know, it's everyone's deck and all that stuff. So that, that was my first cut uh, under yeah. five. And granted, I think all of my cards are under, I don't even know, not that much. So the last one, the last one I'm not as hot on. But So I'm going to go to the second one, which I like a lot, because I can't remember um, if it's actually going to work or not. And actually, I'm going to look it up real quick because I had another option. So the ne- next one I'm going to cut is, um, okay, we're good. So the one I'm going to cut is just Harmonize. So two green... Sure. Two green, two two colors, two green. Draw three cards. Right. I'm a big fan of this card. Um, I think this is starting. And correct me if I'm wrong. I think this is starting to quickly, or not quickly. I think this is starting to fall into like the kind of cancel sort of effect, right? Where like it's very efficient. It, it, it's good, especially in like mono green decks where you don't have a lot of options. But with two yeah. lane, like you said, just being such an engine and even having your backup stuff, I just don't know if you're gonna have that much of a problem drawing cards, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I feel that uh, it's 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 also getting to that point now, particularly because this is in a blue a deck that has blue. Yeah, it, I put it in there for that extra card draw, but honestly, if it was one mana cheaper, it would be a much better card in this deck. Yeah, I just put it in there so I had some some draw that didn't make me discard or. or... Yeah, right, just just straight out. So I, I again yeah. on the channel, we've kind of we've had. <laughs> I I would say in the three years that we've been doing this podcast, we've probably spent close to an hour arguing about <laughs> harmonize. Is it good? Is it bad? Do you cut it or not? So I, I'm I'm cutting it for a card, which is I try to keep everything as close as I could to the Dungeon and Dragon sets, right? And sure, sure. barring that, I wanted to cut. I wanted to bring in something that was also legendary, right? So something I noticed in this deck, which I I, I think is intentional, is there's a lot of there's a there's like a um, a sub theme of like kind of a token build right with mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Joyra also by the way Joyra horribly misrepresented <laughs> I think oh, yeah, I think yeah, his yeah, card yeah. doesn't make any sense but even if you look in your in your spice with um, the protagonist like Abel um, there was yeah. another one that cares about oh um, uh, Kadira there's a lot Kadira. of things that. It, there's like a lot of like incidental token gains, right? And a lot of them depend on like another token or something like that, right? So track me here. I never even heard of this card uh, until before today, but w- this would be a, like a human fighter, maybe barbarian multi-class. We got Maja, that's M-A-J-A, Bretrograd uh-huh. Protector. Do you know this card? I do. It's a. It's a, in my humans deck. Oh hell yeah! So two color for those playing the home game at home. Two colors, a green and double white. Legendary creature, human warrior. That's a two three, and it's an uncommon from call time for nine cents. Other creatures yeah. you control get plus one plus one, right? So already there, we're still trying to stack these abilities. But more importantly, this and this is why I I think this is really worded very well for two lane. Whenever a land enters a battlefield under your control, not play, right? enters a battlefield because you're going to, you're going to be, <laughs> there's probably a good chance that you're going to be pl- entering. You, you will be having lands enter the battlefield more often than you're actually playing them, playing them. Yeah. For sure. Create a one, one white human creature token, right? 
So for me, I feel like this card is like straight gas here, right? It's 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 yeah. overcosted for its stats. But for me, you're not playing this for some sort of beater. You're playing this for effectively an enchantment, right? You're Dude. playing this for an enchantment yeah, yeah. that can die to lightning bolt. But with all the other token, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like you're with all the other plus one plus one abilities we have here. I mean, we were yeah. just talking about with Nadar, right? We're like, that's nice to have, sure. But if you have that and this plus two plus two and generating tokens and getting able to take the initiative back, I, I don't know. I, for me, this like just really stung out as like a solid inclusion. And I'm sure that you could come up with a backstory for uh, for this gal How about. You got that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what? So what do you think about uh, about the cuts there? I'm cutting out a little um, bit of your mean, card draw for a little bit more of a Winsmore mid-range card. What do you think? Well, you say you're cutting out my card draw, but if I have Chile on the field, I'm getting a card from her anyway. Well, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> um, and also, let me just double-check with Chile. Yeah, whenever you cast. Okay. Um, but, like, uh, I was just making sure it wasn't Oh, that wasn't just so creature ETB? <laughs> <laughs> because you're that like, was just, like, a, a loop. It yeah. becomes a loop. <laughs> right? yeah. Of, like, infinite creatures and lands. <laughs> you're like, well, I guess um, I'll just win the game when I cast the spell. <laughs> uh, Whoop, yeah, whoopsies. Be, oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. I, will, I, I am going to torture you with this, though. Um, there is flavor text on this one. I'm, I think I'm, I might miss one of the others. So, uh, do you have it pulled up still? I do now. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna torture you with this because you're the you're the guy who who does this more than me. So we have Veld, Veldka Wandering Sage, who is. Uh, have you ever seen Orange Is the New Black? I have. Okay. So it's Red, the Russian uh, mob boss from okay. Orange Is the New Black. Okay. This okay. one. This one. This is one that we cannot do. So if you don't mind, uh, for, for for posterity, <laughs> would you, would you mind reading this? Okay, I apologize to anyone. Anyone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> any, I, I apologize to anyone who. Well, just anyone. Just anyone. <laughs> our enemies have breached our realm. To survive, the clans must fight as one. That's really good. That's really good. It went a little bit Scottish at the end. Yeah. There, but I think it's because I said the word clans. I was like, yeah, ah, the clans, clans yeah. must fight as one. And immediately you're just thinking, uh, Braveheart. So, anyway, so we're talking about the car. <laughs> We talked about the card draw and everything there. What do you? Th how do you feel about? What do you? What do you think? What are you thinking here? So yeah, I it's mean, a little harmonize... bit of vanilla pick, I know, but no, no I mean, like, harmonize. Uh, harmonize is just a, a, a card that was in the deck to fill out yeah. the deck and make yeah. sure that I had some extra card draw if I needed it. Um, but yeah, like Marge's, Marge's. Again, because I was focused so focused on the theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think about like pulling from other places really, apart from instances and sorceries, because counter spells. There's only a couple. <laughs> right, of them, yeah, yeah. You remove. You um, have to have a removal package. <laughs> yeah, um, but like, yeah, I, I, I like. Her. She's, she is, um, she is a very good kind of like engine within this deck because you're constantly playing creatures. Which means you're constantly drawing, which means you're constantly playing lands. Um, and then, yeah, you throw in things like Jia Hero, who, while I do think she was she was made, the card is a weird choice for her. I do have to say she's become one of my favorites. She's also in Ognis because it means that I can tap my treasures. Oh, my God. Oh, my them. God. That's so good. Hold on. <laughs> Oh jeez. Hold so, on. Sorry, she, I'm still I'm, she, I'm back everyone. I just I think I'm pretty sure I have a foil Jahira here that I wasn't sure to do with. Continue please. Um well because she because she allows you and also like I'm sure you have Kalane in that deck, just so you're aware, if you tap the uh the the treasures for mana but don't sack them, it still works with Kalane's ability because it just says mana generated from a treasure. Wait, Kalane? Um, what's what? Kalane's the painter that says if you can't, how, however many treasures, uh, yeah, mana oh. from, however much mana from treasures, they come in with an extra plus one, plus one counter. Oh, yeah, yes, I do have that in there. So Holy having Kalane and Jahira yeah. out is amazing. <laughs> but anyway, um, but like, yeah, so then you've got Jahira. So essentially what you're doing every time you play a land is you're getting two lands. There she is. <laughs> She's yeah. so pretty. Yeah, it's slam um, So like, yeah, that's a solid, that's a really solid addition. Well, I'm, I'm glad. Uh the last one, that was the exciting one. So uh, for my no budget, which I think all these are under $5, uh, the one the, the one that I was going to cut, which I th 
I I gotta look it up real quick. Um, th- I remember seeing this and I was just like, I just don't know. That's right. Oh, this one. So, I'm my last one is gonna be cutting bar the gate. So sure. two colors in a green or sorry green spoiler alert. Um, two colors in a blue for counter for an instant counter target creature or planeswalker. There is. I'll take this one for you uh, for the accent so you can hear my amazing accent work just in case, uh, you know, <laughs> you're, you're too overbooked and you need someone else to go. All right. So uh, <laughs> this is Nissa Ravane, a.k.a. a goth girl who doesn't give an F, but she loves unicorns. This is what we got to work with. So <clears throat> I'm very excited. Okay. <sighs> so I was listening to some old Iggy Pop records. With my stuffed unicorn in, <clears throat> I just thought that, you know, me and Mincy the unicorn, this path is close to us, man. That was terrible. That's not even close. <laughs> I told, I'm so oh, okay. bad. Like, I can't get in the zone. It's terrible. So anyways, I like this. Here's the thing. If it was, I, I swear, I swear to you, if this said non-creature spell, not creature or planeswalker, not going to cut it. But there's you have better yeah. removal it's 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 it makes sense why it's in the deck again there's only so many cards to say venture but i wanted to cut that for this other one that i'm pretty sure i think i, I like triple checked and i'm pretty sure this one isn't in here but we're really going to be breaking the bank with this common from afr let me tell you sorry uncommon <laughs> three cents this will go into your penny deck and it's a half dragon bard, which I think is rad. We we're talking about wandering troubadour. So three colors and a green for a creature dragon bard. At the beginning of your end step, if you had a land enter the battlefield under your control this turn, venture into the dungeon. And again, it's got that key part of enter the battlefield under your control. There's some flavor text, and this is how we're going to end the episode. And I can re-roll this if you want, but we did roll up. Garuk Wildspeaker, who is a young Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Oh gosh! Uh, do you want me? I can go. I can. We can go back. We can no, go back. Can, to I do, can I do a voice that I like doing? Yes, please. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I'm sorry. I should have asked that first. I apologize. No, 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 no. So this is this is Morgoth the Orc from Lord of the Rings. Oh. Um, <laughs> I don't know what this does. Not really fit with the Wandering Troubadour, but it doesn't. Matter. Please, please. There is a new ballad waiting. Every corner. Wow, that's <laughs> that's it. I can't. I can't beat that. <laughs> what do you? Okay, do you do you RP with that? Mm. Have you? Yes, I ha- only like I, as I a mean, DM or what? As a as a DM, I would I would never run that as a character. No, I could. Because <laughs> like, your throat's just destroyed. <laughs> when 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 like the. Obviously, there's ways of protecting your voice and doing things safety, but that is that that is one that even while you're doing that, you're just delaying. <laughs> I'm so so this is so this is a, okay. I'm sorry. This is gonna be a side. Do you? I know. I know. I told you we're over time a little bit. Do you have like okay, another no, two minutes? I can just go. Okay. So I I used to. Um, for me, I feel like every DM starts as a DM because their the their PCs don't know how to play the game, right? <laughs> <laughs> like you're like I will teach you this game. And then you just happen to be the DM for like four years. So sure. my my skills in DM are like story building, characters, and that stuff. Mm-hmm. I I am I can only act as myself. I can, I can I can't do very many accents. Um, and I one of my first players I ever played with, uh, my friend, uh, shout out Nathan Lane, was a DM, and he was like a trombonist, never classically trained as an actor, and he. I gotta tell you, this guy's accent work, he just pulled it out of nowhere. And he, he could do Russian, he could do like he lives in he lives in Buenos Aires, so he's learned Spanish. So sure. like I think that helped a lot. Like, what's your like where did you find this modulation in your voice? Like was it just a learned skill or uh so playing around a lot is what happens with oh, so whenever whenever um recently uh after Critical Role did Exandria Unlimited Calamity um, Ibria Iyengar, who I love, Brennan Lee Mulligan, who I love, uh, Matt Mercer, who I love, all <laughs> sat together and talked about being they're like literally my three favorite DMs uh, on the internet. But um, 
they were chatting about being a DM and they were talking about the DM thing where your my my partner, bless her, she will see she will be sat working in the room. <laughs> I'm, I'm prepping for a D and D session. And she'll hear me being like, mm, I will destroy everything you love. And she just will open the door and be like, you yeah, right? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, sorry, I'm just working on the dragon. <laughs> like, so I just, whenever so you, I've got so a character that you I'm do interested like, so, in the meeting. So you do, like, you do like reps of the voices before you even get into it. Oh, for sure. Just to see if it fits and see right. if it fits the feel of, of what I'm trying to do. Like, because, like, you can... You, if you've got a great bit, unless you're doing a comedy campaign, you've got this great destroyer yeah, right. of worlds, yeah, right. dragons. You don't want to turn up and be like, hello. Yeah, hello. hey, how you doing, guys? I, so I ran, uh, have you ever played this? Okay, sorry, guys. I know, I know everyone, just enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> all those listening, I'm sure you guys tuned out already. We'll get to the end bits here so you can hear about where our Patreon is and everything. Fine. But I used to play this, uh, my favorite storytelling game is called Vampire the Masquerade. Um mm. So that's that was the one that I kind of broke into everyone with, which is super dark and all that stuff, right? And like where I knew I was like beyond my way was we there's a clan that were like n- effectively vampire Nazi refugees. I tried to do a German accent and I said the word "vut" and everyone just started laughing. I was like, I can't. I don't. How do you come back from this? Is it just practice or what? Well, no, I'll be honest with you. So um, I was running a Curse of Strahd campaign, as all oh. people do at some point. Right yes, now. of course. That was the last <laughs> That was the last campaign I played in D&D before, before I had to hang up my dice, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, was, I was running Curse of Strahd, and, and there's, a, there's a group of um, undead knights that you can kind of recruit to help. Sure. You in, yes, in, yes, in yes, 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 yes. Um, and so one of them had a very Germanic name, the person they would talk to. And so I attempted a Germanic accent and it became, it became that, that comedy. <laughs> Hello. Yes. My name is Hans. How are you doing? I'm here to talk to you. I will help you and do this thing. And it's be good. And we will have a lovely time. And I was like, why, why can't I do a non ridiculous German accent? So I like, I worked really hard on it. Since really? It's not, it's not got much better, but like, it's, it's, it's trial and error. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. Sometimes you make that, and you've got to lean. It. Once you start the character's voice, and you just like, gotta go with it. Yeah. My name is uh, Ulrich, <laughs> and we are here to go. We're going to slay Strat, and it's going to be bad for him. And everyone's just pissing themselves it's, laughing. It's, Ger- like, it's German. Why? Just is Germanic and like Eastern Bloc. Just because I thought you're Russian. I thought you nailed it, right? Is ger- is like that German? Like because it's so staccato. It's is it tough? Do you it's, think it's just? It's honestly, if you want to see someone uh, and in case you couldn't tell i am a fan of critical role um, of course. but like because of what i'm about to say if you want to see someone nail a lightly germanic accent watch liam o'brien play caleb in campaign two of of uh, critical role i was in awe of the man because really i love accents i go there's a website called idea where literally there's just recordings of different people's accents and you can just sit and listen to them and try and figure it out he Watching him, I was just like, how? Because it felt so natural the way he right. did it. Like it didn't seem like someone doing an accent. It just felt yeah, like that y- was the character. You could tell accent. it felt like it was like if, if you listen to it recorded, you're like, okay, this guy probably grew up in Germany and came over here, came over to the states exactly or the that. UK, and yeah, wow. And it's just like my. I'm just yeah, um, yeah, love it. I'm just I I'm jealous. I can't do any accent work. Uh, Mr. Combo's quite a good mimic. My brother's a good mimic. Um, but you know, I, I don't know. It's just something it's, it's prevented me to be like the whole different story. All right. Let's, let's, let's wrap this up. I've, I've kept you hostage here long, far too long. So no, I love it. back to wandering troubadour again, just to remind everyone it's three colors and a green for a, a creature dragon bard. That's a four, two, if you need your end step, if you, if you had a land and the battlefield under control, venture into the dungeon. So what are what are our thoughts here? So and and also I have to remind myself as well that we cut out bar the gate the counter spell that only targets creature or a creature or a planeswalker and then you venture in the dungeon for three. So it's one more so, mana. Honestly, um, with regards to this cut, no, even with this cut, I'll be honest with you, this card's going in the deck. Is it really? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I hadn't even thought about because because I was so focused on cre- grabbing as many legendaries as I could. Right. This card is so perfect for this deck. I I don't know it's why an, I overlooked it. It's like innocuous, it right? Here. That's what I thought, right? And I think like if it said like 
I think it goes back to the same thing because, uh, like, did did you double check on Tulane? His reads, you put a land. Okay, go on. So yeah. that was my thing. If this says when you play a land, I don't think it's I don't think it's half as good, right? No, like, no. Instantly, it's a, it's a, it, it doesn't go in the deck for but because right. it's when a land enters play, that's just. I, I guarantee I, you have one of these lying around, <laughs> or if not, I'm sure you have three pennies to rub together. Well, again, like you've got. Uh, it's, there was definitely one in the binder, but like, like again, like you put that and Radiant Solar on the board. Oh, every time God, you play yeah. a creature, you're potentially getting like two, three oh, yeah, 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 ventures every single time, and that's I just that's wish going like, in the deck. It has it. It has to be. It has to be at the beginning of your end step. It can't be every time, right? Because that's if no. if it, if this said landfall, enter the uh, like venture into the dungeon. That's like mythic rare a 10 drop right like that's that's yeah, like yeah. way too strong but no, i thought i'm glad you like it um i i, I like i said sure. i really was trying to keep to the theme of the deck and not tear it apart i i thought about punking you and putting in like library of alexandria or <laughs> some other twenty thousand dollar card just to sure. just just to mess with you but but here we are so that will actually and speaking of here we are we are also arrived to the end of the episode so thank you everyone for came out and visiting us and we'll we'll do some plugs and then we'll give you we'll give you a chance to like talk about how you thought the episode went and then we'll just close it out um so uh everyone again you know all of our links are on the link tree uh we have our patreon we have our etsy store abyssproxyshop.com with uh the code cmd tower get you some discounts there uh cmdtower.com it's a website that i should be updating but i've been traveling too much to do so uh we can you can see our excellent guest castian blake and correct me if i'm wrong it is at the castian blake correct um, at the castian blake on on twitter and instagram and then also twitch.tv slash castian blake there yeah and then uh, the MTG, t- uh, the Magic Tapping Authority. Where would, is yeah. there? Is there YouTube or something they can go find them there? So you can find us at uh, Magic Tapping Authority on YouTube. Um, you can find us at MT uh, MTG Tap Authority on Twitter and Instagram, I believe. Um, there's, there is a link tree as well with all the things, but you, 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 and we stream every, every Saturday, 5 PM, uh, on Cop, Eastern Cop. standard, right? Yeah. Eastern, sorry. Eastern yeah. time, uh, 5 PM Eastern time, uh, uh, on Twitch TV slash cop cop. It is K zero PP K zero PP hosted stu- by the wonderful Stephen cop. That's stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not stupid. Cop cop is a man that zero throws me off every time. Cause like, I know I have this guy's email. I know we're friends on Twitter. I can't find him anywhere. Um, I, I, every time I send someone to it, they're like cop cop. Is that one P two P zero? It's zero. Yeah. So, um, of course our, our good friend, uh, and my fellow host, Mr. Combo, the man, the myth, the legend is not here. You can find them at Mr. Combo number five on Twitter, uh, also on Reddit and all that stuff. You can find me posting a comment here and there and mostly just retweeting stuff from other people, uh, at big tuck tweeting. I need to find a new bit. You can also find us at CMD tower on Twitter, on Twitter.com as well. Pretty much anywhere else you go, you can find, uh, us, uh, at, Two Lane, Midnight Pathfinder, Dritz Dwarden, Tower.com, or anywhere else we go. So, and if you're looking to support us, obviously you can do that. Like I said, Patreon, Etsy, and BestProductionShop.com, codename CMD Tower. Obviously, I'm not used to doing this, so I'm repeating myself. So, the Cassian Blake, <laughs> the guestess with the mestis. How do you how do you feel today went like this was I thought we had a really good uh, entertaining conversation like how did you oh, think yeah. about like what did you think about like perusing through the deck the cuts the ads like where where are you sitting on like how this deck is looking before before coming on the show so honestly um, when I when I threw the deck together first and foremost thank you for having me on I, oh I, I, I had such a good time with you on the stream on Monday I've had such a good time today. Any time that I can get a chance to, to, to throw some cardboard with you and and sit and chat with you guys, like I'm always down. You, uh, you and also for those, there. and also I think he also means to say hashtag get handed, but that's fine. Hashtag get handed, which I will remember. I'm sorry for. The, I'll learn the bits. I'll get to the bits. I know. Like trust me. Trust me. This is like this is three years in a row of us just doing this. So it, it's yeah. It's no, I mean, the the. 
the energy of that stream and the energy of this chat has just been awesome. And I know like we met properly for the first time on Monday, <laughs> yeah. but like in terms of, uh, but I, I'm, I'm already having a good time. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, glad. Like, I'm so glad. Running through the deck is when I, when I threw this deck together, it, I did exactly that. I threw it together and yeah. went, I want to do something with all these cards. Um, and though I played it and it was like viable, sitting and and processing what all the cards do what how they do what they do and how they interact with each other has been such a this is something i want to do with all my decks now yeah it helps right yeah it's it's something i want to do with all my decks and being able to talk to someone else because that's the thing a lot of the time we're gold fishing we're just we're like we're we're throwing it together and we're going oh this oh this this card this card can't be cut Right, and then yeah. you and then you play it or you sew it to someone else, or like, do you understand that this card doesn't do anything? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, so I, 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 the exact same thing happened with um with a guy called Eli from the MTA about yeah. my Ognis deck because I just mentioned the fact that Jahiro was going into it, um, and I was like, I think I'm gonna cut this and this, and and he was like, well, don't cut that, cut Kiki Jiki, and I was like, cut Kiki Jiki, and I was like, he was like, yeah, because it it doesn't necessarily do what you 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 don't run all that many creatures. And it doesn't necessarily oh, do what you want to do. Oh, you're building the... Oh, are you doing like Agnes Voltron or something uh, along those lines? No, no, no. Literally, just... just um, It's... it's 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 hey, The the deck's name is not... It's nothing to do with this deck. So I, I apologize for talking so much. But it's like, fine. it's called... It's called Get Rich Quick or Die Trying. um, Because it's all about like hasty creatures, giving creatures haste, swinging in, getting treasures, paying those treasures off. Ah, uh, okay. Um, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, like in in what in the worst case scenario, there's a comet storm in there. So if I get enough mana, I just right. Throw you a comet you storm. just win the game on spot. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, no. But like that's what I mean. Like when you put when you put your deck out there, uh, and you talk to someone and go, this thing here, they will always say you'll always have someone go, well, what about this card coming out and this card going in or this? right? And it it changes because we are all so set in the way that we we make decks, even if we don't realize it. Yeah. We're also set in the way we make stuff. It's it's really good to have an outside perspective go, this is great. Here's like two things that make it better. Right. And it can change the deck completely. It's great. I love it. Absolutely. Um, no. Getting to chat about D&D is always fun. <laughs> I, yeah. It's, it, it, I, I have to be – so it, this was really fun, and thank you so much for coming on. Um, we usually don't do these many side tangents, but – uh, you know when the when right. when 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 the when the master is away, the 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 co-host will play, <laughs> I guess. Um, no, it, it is really fun. And like I said, I love these decks, right? I really like these adventure, uh, or sorry, rather adventure into the dungeons initiatives, like these sort of gimmick decks. And I think the thing I like the like I said up the front, the thing that I think you get the most out of this is adding that color green because it's all Sephiroth, mm-hmm. it's all M O N um, and change. Like a lot of it is really tied into that blue green with a splash of black, uh, at, or just straight up Esper. So yeah. I I really like this idea of like breaking out the color pie. I do think that uh, I think the like we said the best card in the deck. If we had to give the best card of the deck, it's definitely uh, oh, it's what's Eliwick. what's her name? It's a planeswalker, right? Yeah, Ellie Wick Tumble. That's got to be the best card in the deck by yeah, a, by a country mile, right? Like yeah. it, it's great, and like um, I wish she had, I wish she had like could be your commander or anything like that, but it's, maybe it's too broken. But anyways, um, <laughs> thank you all for watching. Uh, next, well, so this will come out next Saturday. I think the week after that, Mister Combo should be back online, assuming he's alive. Um, but if he's not. Back. Uh, you got me, and you'll have me with a few more guest spots on SC, on SCR and everything else. So without further ado, we're going to hit the outro, and we'll see you around town. And thank you, all three, view, uh, thank you all three viewers on Twitch. We are going to go <laughs> offline now. Uh, thank you all for watching. We'll see you in... Maybe a week. Long story longer.